I don't want to be right. What would Socrates say to that? It tickles my fans. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Goosies. I don't have hair. Oof. You got Marcos. That's not. No, that's not. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, you do got me. Get over here, Marcos. Let me look at you. They don't want it! Toby and Leroy, ready to deploy. Had to hit it with a little dirt, Lizzo with that with a decoy. Better have about me, boy. Okay, Leroy called me. All to the show, man. Stairs on the side with the show, and Till then, his half moon open. Sometimes cold days like a snowman. No proof, I'm a lie about a mode, and no proof. Like I always wanted him, I never hated him, I never traded him, and if I did, I never traded him. You don't know what? What is a star? Like under the city, the driver's side flies. Wish you could large, so many more. Ten in the mar, never a bar. Hey, ten in the mar, two to the P. Nothing to you, but it's something to me. Hands up as ever, and cute as can be. You can watch on YouTube with you for free. Hey, this one time for the Twitch. This one time for the text. This one time for the phone line. Whole time. I wonder what they're going to do next. You know, I, I just wish you guys would stop the quibbling. Oh, man. I hope we see our guy tomorrow, man. Tommy Hutton. I hope we see him out at uh, Jupiter tomorrow. Yes, sir. Oh, in front of him, all right? man. Morning, everybody. Morning. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Take you up till 2 o'clock here today on this little program as – you want me, to, want, want me to tell you what old Dum Dum did this morning? Which one of uh, me. who is? Oh, you, you're Dum Dum. Oh, yeah. I was like, what did I do? Oh, I was like, so, I go to Frog I got Mart. an email. Oh, yeah. I got an email saying, you know, service on March 14th, you know, at 8 30. Okay. So I'm like, oh, okay, all right. So I go over to the dealership. Right. I tell them, you know, here's what I got. Oh, they must have set the appointment for the recall. All that stuff, right? Bro, somebody knocking on your house? It's the roofers. He's oh. literally right wow. over me. Yeah, this is the first time. <laughs> I was like, this is the this first time. They've been doing it. Like, is this a bit? Dude, like, what's going on here? You know, no. You're silly, dude. dude. I lucky I wasn't here yesterday. The light fixtures were shaking. Oh, I'm like, what are they doing? <laughs> That's not going to be annoying so, at all. Anyway, show. I take my car in. I tell Mima to pick me up. Right? Now, first of all, Mima goes to the wrong dealership. Don't ask me why. Hmm. She's at the Ford dealership. Nobody in the house owns a Ford. Hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole nother story. So I go there, and I can't be too mad at her because I go in, I pull up the email, and right before I show the guy the confirmation number i realize that is for an old car at the hyundai dealership oh huh <laughs> yes for some reason they sent me a confirmation of a for a car i had three years ago uh, so hmm. it worked out but it All was right. a little more there you go uh, this is going to be interesting because you have that, that guy is, he's, he's hammering away there today. Yeah, I also heard like some weird. Do like, you hear that too? In the, in the, so the, it was going in between, it was like a saw or something. Okay, Cause like I came in here today too. And I was like, Hey, there's like sounds happening here in the studio. And it yeah. sounds like one of the computers is like, it kind of sounds like the price is white. Uh, the price is white. <laughs> the price is white. <laughs> Whoa, what are you doing? Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> The, uh, <laughs> the price is right. It sounds like the showcase wheel. It's like. Oh, I expect that there. Like but here, I warned you guys. Like, I couldn't believe you didn't hear it on Monday. I didn't hear it on Monday, but like it, it, that it's guy's definitely like he sounds down. like he's at your door. He doesn't sound like he's uh he doesn't we're, sound like he's on your roof. We're at we're almost at the end of the you know like all the paper is down. They put the border for the gutters, right? I figured all the heavy hammering was done. Now they put in the paper, you know, the paper they put over the um, the black paper. So now they're doing that. So I guess more nails. Hmm. All right. But so I like, so I don't, I don't think it's supposed to be that loud, but yeah, you can hear it today. You couldn't hear it the other days. No, nah, I couldn't hear it at all. And it was louder the other days. Um, all right, let's get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. Back to the black truck. We know 
trucks. All right, so the Miami Heat, they lose to the Denver Nuggets 100 to 88. 88 stinking points. 88 stinking points. And here's here's the thing that is disappointing for me. You hold the team like that to 101 points. Right? That usually signifies heat win, right? Oh yeah. You hold the team to 101 points. I mean, it was it was basically a replica of the finals. That's what they basically they did to Denver a lot in the finals, and they just can't score against them. But you think they 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 they're just so exhausted on the other end because a lot of shots came up short. A lot of them just you know guys missing shots they normally make. I thought I really thought honestly, Leroy. I said this. Uh, I was sitting next to our boys uh, from Locked On. I thought that the Miami Heat played that first quarter tight. I, I didn't think it was a defense thing. I thought they they came in that with clenched cheeks because they were they had looks, and right. then there were just some dumb turnovers by Dun- I mean Duncan Robinson. Hey, Contavious Caldwell Pope doesn't play for your team. I don't know what you like. You I'm were running dribble, the ball. You were like r- running dribble handoffs for for KCP. I don't know what that was, but I, I, certainly for Bam, I think that that would be a because I mean again just. Nobody does as good a job against Joker as Bam Adebayo. You're, you're asking him to. Do, uh, you're asking him to do a whole lot on the defensive end. Yeah. Um. And 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 so it's almost like one of those things where, you know, your teammates have to pick up the slack on the other end, right? Like you you have to understand what you're asking him to do, and and I just don't know that anybody's in any kind of a groove to provide any consistent scoring for the Heat. Nobody. Yeah. And Bam Bam out of the body makes a good point. He says, we only have three people on the team that could shoot. Two of them are hurt. They don't have any shooters. They could not shoot for the the for anything yesterday right uh they had they they nailed five from downtown they only took 23s which on average the heat shoot 33 attempts from downtown a game and they basically had some last minute chucks so they were under 20 for most of that game which is pretty crazy which is weird and one of the threes by the way was made by bam (laughs) so just to tell you what a rough day at the office was for the shooting yesterday for the miami heat and it's 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 Look, it's a trend. It's starting it's to become a, weird, a trend. Well, yeah, it's a trend. But here's the thing that's just most frustrating for me. It's just an odd feeling to have a team like that own you because the Miami Heat are not used to that. Most right. of the teams in this league, the Miami Heat have had success or had, had recent playoff success or, you know, just they, they can tap into something like, oh, why wouldn't you be confident against ball? It's like it's what carries – their their essence basically is like why am i scared of any team these and i get that arrogance because okay you've beaten boston you've beaten tatum and brown you've beaten the bucks but this mother bleeping nuggets team i mean not the regular season not the finals just, I you think cannot you, beat this nuggets team it doesn't every game is the same i think it's the size um it's the pressure they put on you on the defensive end Right, it's almost like they defend you on their offensive side of the ball because they just exhaust the hell out of you, and and you can just see it. They're playing hard, right? And they're just they all look exhausted when they get to the offensive end. Well, it was a rough one to watch, and honestly, Jimmy, I mean, dude, you know, yeah, hey. Uh, we gonna go to you i I gotta ask you something jimmy all right and i hate to do this because you know listen nobody loves jim vp more than me well you you ain't ain't jim vp right now but Uh, that's a guy hey when are you gonna wake up jimmy (laughs) hey that's great i love this but here's the thing dude jimmy is it time or is it not time? Because I'm pretty sure on Instagram you put a week ago, it's that time. So that time or not that time? Because I'm waiting for it to be that time. I thought you said it was that time, but over these last four games, trains have been late, and Jim VP's train is never late. And especially this Nuggets team, they do a better job against him. But even last night, I thought he had looks and 
I just thought that, you know, the shot just wasn't there. The touch wasn't there. I guess to be fair, like there were some, you know, Jimmy gets a lot of those relief outlet passes from Kevin Love. And I mean, there was like six passes to him that were just overthrown and his teammates not being able to find him. A lot of them from Patty Mills, who those guys haven't played a lot together. But on the ones that he had, he still couldn't nail. And I'm trying to wonder, like, when Bam is doing that kind of a job on the end, and Bam really was the catalyst in the third quarter to get you the lead back, he played awesome in that third quarter. Right. You got to have a closer. Jimmy that, plays the that entire fourth, fourth quarter. quarter. Was, they just look exhausted. Everybody. So I don't know. I don't know. Is it something that just having more bodies is going to fix? Uh, is it something having more size is going to fix? I'm just talking about for this game in particular because you don't deal with this a lot, right? You don't you don't deal with this. The only other team that is even close to that is Milwaukee, and you beat Milwaukee, right? Because they don't have the shooting, and I don't know what that's going to look like with Dame. Yeah, but yeah, so. So I, I don't I don't know I don't know I don't know way, I don't know Michael what the Malone? answer huh this Michael Malone oh you 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 sent a flyer last night and I'm like what do you mean when I, I sent a flyer you, last because, night because listen you Marcos you yes. know the night is not gonna end I didn't sleep last night without Tobin doing one of two things yeah going after somebody on the other side that just beat you or going after a ref. It's not going it, to end. The night's not going to end until you do that. And then here it came. This old Mike Malone. I'm like, okay, we can go to sleep now. Well, it's just, it's, it's just. look, I don't know what his deal is. I See, I can't decide whether I like him or hate him, but I think I hate him. He's a good coach. He's a good coach. But I think, you know what I think it is? I think Michael Malone's a little jelly belly because Spo gets a lot more flowers nationally than he does all of a sudden. Which Michael Malone, like, welcome to Spo's life, dude. That's what it was for, like, mm. for for the for the first few years of his career. Like, nobody thought he was a good coach. Nobody recognized the the greatest of this guy. So you, you know, for three seconds, you haven't gotten your flowers, and all of a sudden, you want to take pot shots at the Miami Heat. But then there's a part of me who's like, I can't be a whiny baby because this team has our number. You know, so I'm hey, very torn hey. on how I want to feel. But well, most I just want to be too like, late. too late. This guy, this guy you was a whiny baby on us. This guy was taking pot shots, Leroy. In the what did he say? What did he okay. say? So, 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 you have this, Marcos? You have this this Michael Malone after the game? Did you send it to my personal email? Oh, my my God. Bro, can you grow up and log into your work email? <laughs> I get, I can you, so, like, yes. honestly, like, yeah. you're, you're, you're an adult. Like, you, mm -hmm. you don't have your, your work mm -hmm. email working. What about Leroy? Leroy never uses his work email. I don't yeah, email sound bites to Leroy. He's not the producer. <laughs> okay, I, but maybe he needs to be an adult, too. I use it every day. What are you talking about? You don't even know your password. Not there is different. That doesn't make sense, Leroy. I know it doesn't, but I can log into my laptop sometimes. You know, I'm going to go have you have a, a, a talk with Sid Rosenberg after this. All right. Sid. That's who I, that's who I first uh, interned slash produced for. Sid's uh, in the building today, by the way. Is he? Really? Yeah, I guess he's wow. doing a show from one of our studios. Nice. You want to uh, you want to invite roofers to his <laughs> show by any chance? My good friend Rufa. <laughs> Who went to school with? Was it? Did you, did you go to school with his sister? I went to school with his sister. You yeah. went to school with his sister. That's right. Yeah. Uh, all right, it's in our folder there, Frog Boy. Uh, we'll oh, get that for you. We'll get this 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 salty. Can you we, know, can we hey, just can we can, listen? Hmm. Listen, this is not very becoming of you. It, it's not very becoming. Because, I know because, it's not very because becoming. but but here's the deal. You won't stop. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Even no. though you know it makes you look bad. No, I don't care. And it makes you care. look like a whiny baby. <laughs> I, don't like baby. You don't care. I don't like the fact that, that Jokic is carrying Bam around in a baby Bjorn. I don't like the fact that Aaron Gordon pushes Jimmy around in a stroller. I don't like it. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. I'm not liking that Michael Malone is putting Eric Spolster in a high chair and saying, here comes the airplane. I don't like it. Because <laughs> I'm not used to this. I'm not used to a team just dominating the heat. And like, okay, there's but there was a, like a run where like the Kings had the Heat's number in the regular season, but now you also on on top of it, this dude has a championship ring with with your logo embroidered on it. It's annoying, and now he's taking little digs at your franchise, you know, because 
you know, he likes to act like he said this yesterday because I was asking him about Bam and and uh, the job because, you know, Joker and Bam have a lot of respect for each other. And he goes, you know, yeah, and by the way, you know, so he gives a lot of flowers to Bam and he says some nice things about Bam. And then he goes, by the way, we have a lot of respect for the Heat organization from the top down, from Spo down. I was like, oh, OK, that's kind of nice. And then I hear digs in the post. This guy can't. You know what? When with some class, Michael Malone. All right. With some grace. All right. That's what a true championship organization does. You win, you take your victory, and you move on. You don't rub people's noses in it. It was just, you know what? It it, it, it put him down a couple notches because Spo would never. Spo would never. Maybe Pat Riley. But Spo would never. Everybody knows that Reggie's been struggling to make shots, never for a lack of effort. Uh, the guy's in the gym all the time, and... The funny thing is I had Jamal Murray and Contavious Caldwell Pope at the scorer's table during that stretch. And this, this speaks a lot about our group. Both those guys said to me, coach, let Reggie ride. Let CB ride. This group is playing well. And, you know, part of our culture, because we do have a culture in Denver as well, part of our culture is being selfless, getting over yourself. And I think that, you know, th that's another example of how our team is always uh, getting over the individual, thinking about the collective. So wait, you say that's a knock on the heat? Oh, oh, you don't think it's a knock on the heat? You don't think this this arrogant mother bleeper, this this well, this well, wait, this wait, 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 wait. this Johnny wait, wait, wait. come lately? Can I just say I'm something? Saying, oh, we have can I just can I just we say have something? Culture too in Denver. Why? I can understand why he would say that. He played against a team that has heat culture on their shirts. All right. Well, you know something? <laughs> We've earned that over a time, all right? I'm not disputing just, that. What? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not disputing that. But maybe he said, you know what? We have culture, too, because he played a whole game mm -hmm. against a team that has heat culture on the front of their jersey. Well, let me ask you something, Michael, because he won't call you Mike because he gets really mad at that. Which, by the way, I was kind of like, should I call him Mike in the press conference? You definitely call him oh, Mike. He, hate, he, hates, he hates I will for now. He yeah. hates being called. You know, he's like, I'm Michael. Hmm. There, there's a there's a clip. I'll, I'll we'll find it for you. Where you he, he tears down hey, a reporter. Isn't he isn't he the same one that said James? No, you're thinking of Bruce Brown. Oh, um, Bruce Brown. Okay. Brett, Brett Brown. Brett Brown. Brett Brown. Yeah. That loser Sixers coach. Brett Brown, yeah. It's a pot shot, dude. With some you? grace. Because if there's something about the old heat and old tobes, we don't rub your nose in it. We win with class. You know what I love? Not sure. I love how. I love how Jay Fig is not on the show, but on the show. So she yeah, comments on the show Jay from the side. That's a pot shot, dude. That's a dig. Uh, and by the way, I'm going to tell you something right now. I try to spell mental. He, he's not happy about this this whole Denver thing. Not happy at all. Uh, I, I heard things that were very, like, unspo like in the post game yesterday. I'm like, who's this guy? Wow. You know? Getting to him. I think it is getting to him. He's very competitive. And this Denver team, you know, you said what? The Giants. 2018 is the last time that you beat them in your 18. on your court. They're Giants. I understand. Yeah, but whatever. No, it's not whatever. They're not only good, but they're Giants. I'll tell you what wasn't giant was the rim last night. <laughs> yeah, except for uh Jamal Murray. Every single time we cut it to like four or something like that. You know, yeah, but you know what the thing that sucks is like, it, all right, lose to Jokic, lose to even Michael Porter Jr. Yeah, but but intangibles wonder Christian Brown oh, is gonna is gonna go on a on a seven zero run by himself, and then Reggie Jackson who couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat this month. Yep, that's who you're gonna let you sink you in the fourth quarter. No, but doesn't matter. This team owns the Heat right now, and it. Killing me. I hate it. What would you rather? A, they're really, uh, they're, they're really good, man. <laughs> I know they're good. I, I hate it. It's enough. I'm tired I mean, of them being so good. They got depth. Oh, do they? Depth and size, and they got a giant Serbian who can throw the ball backwards, and and everybody shoots threes. Like, yeah. And, and you want to know what the killer was yesterday? What? That dude doesn't do a thing all day, that stupid joker. Bam has him, the clamps on him. And then, like, after all that exhaustive effort, 
It's like an eight point game. And then just a stupid pew, 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 ball moves around right to Joker. Feathery little hook shot right over Bam. I was like, are you, you? I see. I look at that as you, you hate them, but you're complimenting them by saying, I know. I, 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 yeah. I don't like this. I, I normally, like, I don't like my begrudging respect for them. I don't like this. Normally, I like to lash out and say you guys are bums and a bunch of hippies who smoke in the mountains. Mm. But but I can't because they beat us in the finals last year, and we never beat them in the regular season. And I'm not used to this, and I don't like it. Spurs-esque? Or, or is the hate deeper? Different. Is different. It, well, no. Different. You, different. It's yeah, different. Because know. you know what sucks about – you know, here's what sucks about Denver. They just ho-hum it. Right? You you playing the Heat are playing their ass off all over the place, hustling, getting rebounds or whatever, and they're just like, uh, uh, do, 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 do. who's gonna score this time? And then Christian Braun is it Braun or Brown? Brown, which is annoying because it's spelt Braun. Like Braun, Ryan. right? And and, like, and then all of a sudden you go, who's that? It Seven points, right? So so that's the thing that that gets you, and it's like. You want to be mad, but who are you going to be mad at? Nobody does anything. Nobody talks trash. Nobody. So you went after the coach. <laughs> Didn't like it. <laughs> it's not very becoming of you. Told, told you're the best. I, I agree now. it's not becoming of me, but you want to know something? Somebody has to be mad about it. I think we everybody's mad. We respect game all the time. I think everybody's mad. Dade South says Tobin will always find something to be mad at. I know. I was just mad. I, I just wanted to I wanted to get on the first of all, they're already first of all, don't lose to the wizards. Okay. Don't lose to the wizards. Wait, that's over. Over. That's over. We're talking about Denver right now. That's what that's what the, the thing is where you make a losing streak four games is because you lose to the wizards. Okay. Here's and then the also, also the stupid Denver team. We can't figure them out. Can I ask you a question? Here's what concerns me. What concerns me is. You're putting yourself in the same spot that you were last year. And you're just going to make the assumption, we did it last year, we can do it again. And that's how your ass ends up home for the first week of the playoffs. Agreed. So agree that's, that's, that's my happened, concern. That's what happened in the uh, the year after the finals run of the bubble. They thought they were, oh, bucks. And then they got their ass swept. Bryn Forbes outscored that, Jimmy Butler. That, that's, the, that's my issue with this. Which, by the way, yeah, Jimmy, it's time, you got it's time to push the panic button as yeah. far as putting that final run in for the end of the season. And and I'm not saying they're not. But it, it you you got to do something. Well, listen, Jimmy Butler, you let me know when it's is it time because you told me it's that time. Well, no, you listen, it, you, you put no, yourself in that it. situation. No, 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 no. You put yourself in this spot. He bought it. Dude, dude, you put yourself in this spot. They won what four and three in a row, right? They won, they won like eleven and, th and three over fourteen. It was, it was eleven and three, three and 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 what did you come in every day with? I mean, you know, I was I was saying Jim VP, right? But then all of a sudden, like he he stopped scoring. It's called basketball. I don't like it. And Michael Malone win with some class. Wait, wait, <laughs> you 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 have, not, dude. You sound so bad right now. You just sound terrible. I understand you're upset, whatever, but I, I tell you who's worse. Hmm. J Fig. Because she put her finger and took a picture, and her finger was bigger than Jimmy Butler. She was so high up. Man, <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about those two mushes coming up next. When you QAM.
you do something for me? 21. Can you hit a little rich flex for me? Tobin. And 21, can you ah, do something Welcome back. For me? Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Take you up until 2 here on the program. Miami Heat lose to the Nuggets last night. You guys can get in on the chat. Uh, Miami 560 WQM Endgame says, uh, Jimmy only scored 15 points last night. Bam didn't cook and Jaime didn't go off. All this won't continue <laughs> to happen, and we only lost by 12 points. Yeah, except Endgame, it has happened. Like, nine out of the last 10 times against this franchise. So, yeah, maybe you want, hey, maybe somebody will knock off the Nuggets. I don't know who because they look unstoppable, and now they're the one seed. And Carl Anthony Towns isn't healthy. And the OKC Thunder just seem too young. And none of the old teams you really believe in in the West. And, and they have a giant Serbian who nobody can stop other than Bam. But he's so tired having to wrestle a grizzly oh, bear oh. that, like, the idea that he gives you 15 points should be a gift. And where the hell were you last night, Jimmy? And Spoh's sitting here, you know, crying about foul calls after the game. What is that? It's that damn Camila Cabello. You know what, dude? Hmm? I hate to say it. Yep. She's no Shakira. She is no. She comes here. Hey. She gives Jimmy Butler. She gifts him that that stupid jersey. Dumb jersey. 0 and 4. And I don't know who to blame. Her hips lie. You know, it, it, it could, could be uh, Camila Cabello. It could be it, it could be J Fick. I mean, she was in the building last uh, night. She was in the building. She, she was in the building. Was, I mean, this, the the building. Oh, my goodness. Talk about the rafters. <laughs> Ooh, she was up high. What a loser. How, How did you lose? Because you were loser. also very high, yes, Marcos. I, initially, I And was. I'd like to know, yeah. how did you get next to Jake Paul? Because oh, his seats yeah. were a lot better than yours. Oh, friends with Jake Paul, I would just want you to know. How we, are you friends with Jake Paul? We connected eyes. Really? On the way to the restroom. I said, hey, that's Jake Paul. And we connected eyes. Mm. So, How did friends. you get down there? Like, who let the riffraff in? <sighs> I had the, the typical Miami experience yesterday. Uh, let's start off with a uh, pregame in which I went to a location that is that the situation? No, okay, is that a rod? No, no, I don't know who that is, but he, <laughs> he's got himself a shirt. Yes. And a tan potentially shorter than I thought he was. Uh, okay. Uh, got recognized a lot. You know that helped get close. I was surprised they Paul. threw him up. I, I I surprised they threw him up on the jumbotron because I knew he was going to get booed. Because mm. I don't think late, I don't right? think they've thrown him up every time on the jumbotron. Yeah, game ops. They decided to do it late. Yeah, not sure why. They uh, they did a game ops did a great job because after the Heat got a timeout because Bam went on a crazy run, they threw Mike McDaniel on the jumbotron because oh, he was there last my night. My God. And that was great game ops. Throwing Jake Paul in the uh, the jumbotron, you want you want to make that like a first quarter thing, hmm. you know? Because he's gonna get booed. That Mike McDaniel, which is weird, right? No, it's not weird. No, all right. Do you really? Do you ever listen to how much Joe Rose hates him? Yes. Yeah. Like Joe hates the Paul brothers. Yeah. And like I was trying to show, uh, I showed Joe today this video. Mike Tyson released his first training video. Uh oh. And Joe's like, oh, just one of those shots gonna put him down. And I'm like, he's gonna be so mad when Jake Paul beats Mike Tyson. <sighs> Great. You want to see? Uh, you want to see this video of Mike Tyson, Leroy, yeah. training yesterday? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'm gonna throw this up here. This is uh, Mike Tyson for our uh, radio audience. It's Mike Tyson. He's got his trainer, and uh, it's about 15 seconds with jump cuts. By the way, this is not a fluid 15 oh, seconds. What? Uh, he would give me a straight 15 seconds. And it's Mike Tyson at 57. He'll be 58 before he steps in the ring with Jake Paul, hitting the mitts and the pad and the body and the body pad. It's day one. The fun just begun. <laughs> That's cute. Wow. <laughs> Mike, say this real quick. We're gonna we're gonna film you for two seconds. Mike, uh, this is the cue cards. Uh, get your Muhammad <laughs> Ali on. But I. <laughs> I'm still saying at 57. That hit you. Oh, there's still impressive hits. It's great for 57. No, it is impressive. It's great. And yes, if he gets Jake Paul, you know, Jake Paul will be in trouble. But like, 
I don't know, dude. Like that that's not like you can very clearly see they're editing between each sequence of combinations. So. As he stops and smoke a cigarette and have a cup yeah, of coffee. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's why I'm worried about him. That's why I'm worried about him. Oh, but Jay Fig yeah. is complaining because she said that Marcos was sitting behind her. Oh, very so, okay, but but Marcos did not settle for those seats oh, no. apparently. No. So how did you get down? Yes, so yes, yes. So you know, again, back to me being a recognizable figure of the community. I am not settled with these peasant seats. I'm like, oh my god, what, what am I going to do? Just hang one of these jerseys up here? So I decided to go to the Bacardi Ocho Lounge, like a true Miamian mm. first. And I may or may not have seen my uh, acquaintance there. I'm going to keep his name secret. Yeah, keep him, keep everybody anonymous. Yeah, we'll call him Puntin' Peeve. <laughs> <laughs> Way to go. Yeah, there you go. Way to keep it a mystery. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No one will ever know who this was. He was kind enough to potentially or potentially not grant me access to the Bacardi Lounge. I had an opportunity to watch the first half there. That Bacardi Lounge is nice. I told Very you, nice. like I was, I didn't realize how nice those luxury boxes are at the Heat so game. Nice. And the empanadas that they. Oh, oh man, dude! I yeah. had these. Uh, I got a trick salon into having me on the pregame again. So yeah, what? Yeah. What? Say it again. I had- brisket covered tater tots wow that was good that sounds incredible i had some and you know you you know you eating fancy food in an arena when you need a fork bro if there's something anything that's covered i don't know if i just have brisket but if brisket is covering something oh man sounds delightful absolutely like an adult i had an ice cream cone which was seven dollars but hey you know whatever i had an ice cream cone with some sprinkles of course and then i was like you know what i think i want to go courtside now and uh had to find my way to court so i'd never been there before uh got down there and i'm like oh jakey boy jake and then once the security escorted me away from him i felt like we kind of had a moment there as he walked to the <laughs> restroom oh you think like you were the only person to yell jake to him <laughs> yeah i think it was because i said jakey boy i think <laughs> that's really what got me in with the uh paul brothers but yeah sat down at the courtside bar let me tell you something about the courtside bar though. Mm-hmm. Literally, no. I'm the only person watching the game. Literally, I'm like, what a move, Everybody's man. just there to be. And, and everybody's just Is like, that the bar where you go up through the tunnel and, like, yes, you come yeah. out of – So, I got tickets uh, from a buddy of mine who has season tickets down there. Yeah. And he gave me his parking pass. I parked right outside the door that goes up into that bar. Yeah. That's how close I was. Perfect. We go in there, and I say, hey, Fod, you want to get something to eat? Sure. I got a drink, a couple of cheeseburgers, some fries. He got a lemonade, $112. Absolutely. 100%. Yep. Hey, it, about- and and you know, you sitting in there, you can't say never mind. No. Yeah, it's done. Because you already, <laughs> Cause, like. Because you have the people, they're not even looking. They're not even looking. They have, even car- looking. they have a carving station. Oh, they got a prime rib. Turkey, oh, like I'm like, holy smokes! I said we should have just got that. He said that's yeah. probably two hundred. No, well, yesterday it was seventy bucks for the buffet. Oh, and seventy bucks! Like, there oh, you go. Seventy bucks. They don't take payment it's plans. The biggest so. weekend. <laughs> yeah. They don't take payment plans. Wait, don't take- did you try? Did you try to put in the code heat win? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just handed him a small little coupon that said heat win, and it didn't work. It Not was really. uh, it was funny because I the only thing I kept thinking of with Jake Paul sitting where he was sitting is that's not really where Floyd sits, and all oh. I kept thinking to myself is what if Floyd Mayweather sits there and we have Gotcha Hat Part Two? Oh, because okay. <laughs> remember there was the one time where Jake Paul and and Floyd Mayweather's people got into it, but they were sitting across from each other, and then shenanigans happened outside the uh, the arena where Jake Paul ran away. Yeah, um, but I was thinking to myself. I may have texted the same person that moved you, but I was like, is Floyd coming tonight? Because I feel like I want to have video ready for this if this happens. <laughs> yeah, this is, that was honestly a good call on, on your part. Good call. Oh, I, uh, everything but the game. That's not true. I'm boots, I'm, dude, I'm boots on the ground, and I am following the game. I'm not a and fan of that. Why are you always on Tommy, Tommy Tig's show and oh, pregame? He asked me. 
all the time. Trust me. Tommy Tag loves Tobin. You know what? I get silly sauce. He gets serious basketball talk. That's well, he asked me serious questions. You ask serious questions, you get serious tobes. Tobin oh. is also the one of the most consistent people who will answer the phone, yeah. be on time. I've heard him at his son's football game or various like cheer. I have events. a respect for Tommy Tag. He is a who radio pros pro. He is a pros pro. I used to produce the heat broadcast on a championship season, I might add. Mm. And oh. you know, I, 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 you know, we go back, we go back, and I, and I, and I, the people who inspire me and teach me things, and those are the people of, I'm going to be good to those people. And Tommy needs me. I don't care where it is on a Heat Weekly. I'm going to show up. Right. He needs me for a pregame. I'm going to show up. Tommy's yeah. got bars. He's good, man. I'm going to show up because you want to know something. When I say it's that time, I mean oh! it. I mean it, Jimmy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Back after this. Oh, bud first. Bud first. Bud first. Let me tell you guys about my man, Bernie Kosar. He's he played for the Canes. He won a championship with the Canes. He won a championship with, I want to say, Dallas. But his greatest comeback is the one he, he made with his helmet. At the grueling career, 40 surgeries, 100 concussions, Bernie was down but not out. He realized that food is medicine and changed what he put into his body. Bernie started creating wellness products and has finally released Kosar Coffee, an organic coffee that is infused with vitamin D and resveratrol, which is nature's miracle antioxidant. This combination of ingredients is exclusive only to Kosar Coffee and is the perfect way to start your own journey to a healthier life. You can also get merch. I have a sweatshirt and a t-shirt. Go to CosarCoffee.com to order your game-changing coffee or get you some nice merchandise. Use code Leroy and you'll get a discount only for our listeners. And as you know, Bernie believes you deserve to be healthy because you matter.
get money. New money. Hey, rich boy selling that. All the maiders want to check. You know, speaking of Bernie, throw some G's on it. He had a great tweet today. And I was like, you know what? That's why I love Bernie Kozar, man. Bernie had a tweet. I was just like, I needed that. Bern said, make some time for you because you matter. Heart emoji. Wow. You know? That's why I love Bern. He's a very positive dude. He is a very positive dude. It's good vibes with him. You know, Michael Malone could take a lesson, you know? Just take your victory and move on. Goodness. Take your victory and move on, dude. That statement lasted all of two seconds before you went back to your old you. This is ridiculous. I thought you were in a better place right now. I was in a better place, but then they showed the score on the bottom of the TV, and I was like, I'm not in a better Mm. place. Remember what I kept saying? I'm fine. Ah. This one, I'm not fine. I don't like Mm. it. I don't like it. (sighs) It's okay. Last time this year, we have to see them until the final. Yeah. Suns are going to beat them, though. I don't know. I don't don't think so. I don't think think anybody's beating them. I don't think anybody's beating them. But, you know, hopefully, hopefully the Heat will be back in that situation again, and they will get another crack at them. Mm. Well, hopefully they won't have to be in the play-in, because that's a crapshoot. Dude. I'm going to tell you something right now. Miami Heat. You better sweep this weekend against the Pistons. Oh, my God. I can't be. I'm just going to give you a fair warning. Yeah. I can't. You're going to be uncontrollable. I'm going to tell you right now. I can't be held responsible for what I say. If you lose one of those. I'm not saying I'm not talking about split on the road. I don't care if it's on the road. Mm -hmm. If you don't take both those Pistons games. Yeah. I can't be held responsible for what I say. And you want to know something? What's that? I think people want to hear what I have to say. I'm okay, kind of so interested. I'm just telling you right now, dude. I'm intrigued. Don't lose those Pistons games. All right. Do not lose those Pistons games. All hmm. right. Anyway, Kirk Cousins is officially introduced as a uh, as, as an Atlanta Falcon. <laughs> More than like... laughing at that, dude. Because <laughs> you hate it. Let me just see oh, his just face. enough of his face already. Yeah. Because what there's do do? I, I don't know. It's just it, it's just enough of Kirk Cousins, you know. Can I what say this? I will never have a bad thing to say about Kirk Cousins. Why that dude has made so much money with nobody ever thinking he was ever gonna be any good. That's why you respect him. I'm just saying he just went on about his business and kept making money, and just kept being, you know, Kirk Cousins, Kirk Cousins. But like I saw this thing that was uh, it was like on the on the television like who has more pressure on him Kirk Cousins or Russell Wilson I'm like what a ridiculous question of course it's Russell Wilson right. everybody hates him Kirk Cousins has gone on with no pressure everything he does for your team is a bonus yeah and he's never I mean they do do the they do do the can't win any game that starts after eight o'clock but that's well, true so we're saying that we have lefty Kirk Cousins. <clears throat> I mean, look at his record. I mean, the Heat kind of playing like Kirk. Here, here's, here's. Can I say this? Is it the team or is it the quarterback? Oh, it's the quarterback. Because long before, no, long before, totally the quarterback. Long before Tua got here, the same thing was can't win the big game. So now we just have somebody to complain to about yeah, well listen peter pan like when you get when you're gonna get 55 million dollars a year people are gonna give you most of the blame that's how it I, works I, I i i understand that but you know, i'm saying i'm saying this when your team and franchise has been living this for the past however many years now all of a sudden you got somebody to blame so you do it but how many Tannehill debates did we get into? Like Tannehill got it too. Like that, the quarterback always gets it. Okay. You know that's nothing new. Tannehill, okay. that's nothing new. Okay. <laughs> dude, enough already. Okay, that dude took more. Let me. You know Tannehill took like more sacks than anybody since he was drafted. Like he's not that mobile. Mm. That dude got drilled. Well, he's still transitioning from wide receiver. Did you know he was a wide receiver in college? <laughs> Still on the market, by the way. If you guys are looking for a backup, we will. Uh, we will get to this. We got to take a break. We went a little long last segment, but um, 
there was some good praise for Tua. I don't know if maybe Marcos can be swayed by our, our new weapon, our new weapon to the to the arsenal, Janu Smith, who he had some good things to say. I'll tell you about it next.
for A for effort. Dolphins quarterback. Tua. It's how we Tua. It's how we Tua. Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Tua, Tua, Tua. Can go to hell. Tua, Tonga, Baloa. Dolphins quarterback. Daddy loves you guys. Our Tua with Tobin and Leroy. Check the history of food. <laughs> <laughs> Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Take you up until 2 here on the program. Let's get to our headlines brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Super Center. Why buy a truck in a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Miami Heat lose. Talked about it a lot. I want to move on to other things. We will get back into it. though. I do. I have some other things to talk about from that game. I do. I do. But I want to get to other topics at the current moment. So we'll we shall. We shall move on. You, uh, Christian back. Wilkins. I will be back. I'm telling you right now. I will be back. I have more heat stuff. Trust me. Uh, Christian Wilkins. He said goodbye yesterday on a little thing that people like to call Instagram. And uh, I don't know if Jay Fig, I sent you it last night. I don't know if you have it for uh, for our viewing audience, but. For uh, those who are listening to us, Christian Wilkins wrote, Five years ago, the Miami Dolphins took a chance on me, and I'm forever grateful. My goal was to always leave the city and organization better than the way I found it, and it's been an absolute pleasure to call it home. I proudly closed this chapter knowing I gave it uh, I gave it my, all I had. Miami, you will be missed. You will hold a special place in my heart forever. Hashtag, it's morphin' time. Hashtag fins up. Hashtag ninety four out. You right, Leroy? <laughs> I liked him. <laughs> I liked him too, man. There's a hole in my heart <laughs> and in our defense. Man. I can't believe we're using two the one guy. Oh my God. Man. I I mean, like, if there's one guy when he got drafted, from the second he got drafted, that you said, I can't wait for this guy to be here for 10, 12 years. It was yep. him. It was him. More than any other person in recent history, right? Yep. Because most of the most of the players. So say, for example, we love X. We loved X. Everybody loved X. But X was banged up, and when they said, we're not re-signed X, you're like, okay, we get it. We understand. Right? This mm-hmm. hurts. I know. I know, dude. But, but it's your fault. My fault? Yes. Me because, personally? Yes. Because you're always the guy that says, F them picks, figure it out, don't worry about tomorrow. Let's do it right now. That's not my fault. But this we fought about this all last year. I didn't tell him to give Bradley Chubb wait, 100 million wait, 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 wait. We fought this topic. All, all I last said year. last year was pay him last year. I thought it was stupid. I was right there with you. Why am I getting blamed? We, we agree on that. But you were the guy I'm like, hey, man, I... Uh, I don't know about spending all this money. Don't worry about that. You worry about right now. Stop worrying about the future. Who cares about the future? Yeah, that you was you. No, no, you no. Want... That was you. No, don't sit you... here and say Here, it was. Here's, here's the thing, though. I, I don't I don't think it is my fault. I think it's Chris Greer's fault for ego. Because you know what? Something I think they could have paid him. But they chose not to because he just didn't want to get beat in the negotiation. And it was then... an ego play. And then it cost it would have cost seven and a half more million a year. Yeah, he just didn't want to get beat. He didn't want to get beat. So he'd rather walk than lose the negotiation, which shows ego from Chris Greer. I still think that I understand them not being able to afford him, right? Like, like real talk. I'm sad to see him go. That was that was one of my guys. You know, everybody knows this. 
okay? The Dolphins thought that his market wouldn't be that high, so they didn't want to pay him. I even get that. It was a bad, bad, you know, move. But here's the thing that I want to know. Did you tell Christian Wilkins you would not franchise him if he reported to camp? Yeah. Because it well, seems it seems as if though this is probably one of the first times something like this has happened. Yeah, we're not gonna really probably find out till after the draft, I would imagine. That's it. Or will he even answer it? I'd imagine he's not gonna he's not gonna dodge that. Because because here's the deal. Although I hate it, I would respect him for keeping his word because I know a lot of teams that wouldn't. Listen, don't give him any ideas for an out, okay? I no, I'm just saying I, I would respect him for keeping his word to the player. I Again, let's be clear. I hate the fact that Chris Wilkins isn't here, right? Yeah, but I mean, in fairness, we've already had a, a, a dolphin this offseason come out and say that Chris Greer is a public liar because Xavier Howard was told, he's like, he told me the door was open. He never said that. Right. So I don't know. So who's the, you think, you think X is up right here? You think X would come back here after that? Nah, no way. I don't know. I saw him at the improv on Tuesday. He sure does love a comedy club. I also want to know everybody keeps doing the fins up. Even Mike McDaniel yesterday uh, was on the Jumbotron, and he did fins up. Yeah. And I thought that Jimmy Buffett said no more. I thought that's what happened. I mean, the, the estate of Jimmy Buffett, of well, course. Yeah, I think he's a little busy right now. The dead? Wait, but he can't tell people to not do fins up. Can't tell anyone anything. Oh, I mean, them. they did. They sent they, they 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 said they own fins up Jimmy Buffett's estate, and so the Dolphins like they have been trying to get rid. Like it so used you to can be stop there. everybody from doing it. Nobody can. Do I don't fins know. Up. I don't know. I thought that we were gonna get some kind of new slogan, but I thought fins up was going away. You know that would be the equivalent to the University of Miami saying you can't do the U. No, it would be like it would be like what? another school saying, "I know we own that." Right. Yeah. You I got know. It. Wasn't there a battle back in the day for 12th man, like Texas A&M right, and Texas A&M Seahawks. in Seattle? They battled right. over that. But no, because I, I think the thing that's weird about the Jimmy Buffett estate is Jimmy Buffett was a big South Florida fan. And I know everybody wants to get every dime for everything, but like. It's something it that Jimmy, Jimmy Buffett would probably never do. Well, it's part of Jimmy Buffett's like, like Jimmy Buffett had a partnership with the Dolphins for a certain time. A year. And yeah. And. Well, he had the stadium for a year. He had right. a stadium for a year, but they kept playing his music. Right. And obviously, he was a big South Florida fan. That was one of the things with him passing away that everybody kind of acknowledged. So, I don't know. I just thought that was kind of like rotten from the estate. Like, oh, you guys can't do fins up anymore. It's I like, why? Think Wouldn't they you be happy that that's part of his legacy? Here's what I would hate, of, hate about it. I would hate that somebody who hasn't shared that relationship would do something that the individual or the person would never do. Yeah. I don't think Jimmy yeah. Buffett would ever do that. Right. And for his estate to do it is kind of yeah, lame. It, right. It's just lame. <coughs> um, but Mike McDaniel was at the game yesterday. He actually was on the Denver Nuggets uh, broadcast. Which was now, if you remember, we had Dan Soder on. Isn't he, his, a, isn't he a Nuggets fan? He is a Denver fan. We had Dan Soder when uh, he was at the Improv. Marcos got him on the show, and we asked they're him about friends, this. Right? Well, he no, they're they're like childhood friends. Right? If, if you guys don't know Dan Soder, he was in the show Billions, but he's a comedian. Um, uh, you know, he's a funny guy. He, 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 he legit does great impressions. But he is childhood friends with Mike McDaniel. He came on our show and accused Mike McDaniel of being a fraud just to be hobnobbing with Spo. That he's not a Heat fan. That he is a Nuggets fan. He's from Aurora, Colorado. And so, yesterday, Mike McDaniel was at the game. Nuggets, Heat. He's sitting courtside right next to Spo. Like, literally right next to Spo. Okay? And the Denver Nuggets broadcast, they're, uh, they're you know, they're essentially their Will Manso on the Heat broadcast was, uh, you know, scoping around, and they caught a little interview with Mike McDaniel, and here it was. Denver native and now Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel. Uh, how's Miami treating you, Mike? It's warm. It's humid. It's wonderful. 
get, do you miss the snow because forecasts call for about eight feet of snow in Denver tonight? Yeah, you know, the grass is always greener, so uh, or the snow is always snowier, I guess. Or wetter. Hey, do you have any uh, conflicts watching Miami and the Nuggets, knowing that you grew up in Denver? I have no conflicts with elite competition. Yeah. And uh, uh, the Denver Nuggets um, really bring the best out of most teams. Um, and and uh, the Miami Heat, as I've observed, them, don't turn down any battles. So this is fun to watch. You're exactly right. Uh, you told me that until you arrived in Miami, you had never sat front row at an NBA game. What's this experience like? I mean, not even close. Uh, um, it's unbelievable. Uh, I, uh, they're... Uh, yeah, they're taller in person. Um, but the, uh, yeah, I hadn't even sniffed 15 rows from here up until two years ago when people people like you dressed in wonderful suits like you're dressed in started interviewing me. Well, you've got a wonderful watch, dude. It looks like you get anywhere with that watch right now. Um, yeah, it's a, it's a keeper. <laughs> uh, just so you know, Jake Paul is sitting right across from you. So if you're interested in any... Uh, Exhibition boxing matches. That guy's fighting Mike Tyson in July. There will be no fisticuffs on my end tonight. You look like a bruiser. Thanks, Mike. Best of luck to you. Can I just say this? <laughs> I don't care whether that's a Denver broadcast, a Miami broadcast, ESPN, Fox, or any other station. That was a bunch of nothing that none of us deserved. <laughs> you want to know how I know Mike McDaniel didn't want to do that? When he said the snow is wet? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's good. But the way I know that he the way I know he didn't want to do that was that entire interview was 90 seconds, and that's usually one answer from him. <laughs> right. So he answered six questions. <laughs> that's a record. That's a record. Oh, man. That's terrible. That no. was absolutely. It, it Will Manso wouldn't. That, that, no, you you insult Will Manso. Oh, I mean, like, listen, he's Will Manso's way better. He's a Will Manso's a pro's pro. This guy's a carnival barker. But uh, that's just what his job is. He's he's their sideline guy. I, but, oh, okay. Dude, that was horrible. What what's wrong with you? You you look like you got a, a look on your face. Who me? No, Marcos. I just think with everything going on, you're losing all these pieces of your oh team. Oh my goodness! You got time to enjoy <laughs> it. Man. You got time to go have fun, dude. <laughs> yeah, you, you got the draft in a month. You, you shouldn't be hitting the books, McDaniel. You got enough time. To you enjoy want him a scouting? Game. Yeah, I do want him scouting. You know he doesn't make the picks, right? That's Chris Greer. He makes the picks, dude. What do you mean? He has a say. He's the reason Tua is getting $50 million. Let's be honest. I mean, he is part of the reason Tua is getting $50 million for so, sure. So, you know, if you're going to be that responsible for a majority of the salary cap, why don't you take it a little bit serious, huh? So you just want him to enjoy. Marco, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Do you understand how contracts work? No. The best guy doesn't get the most. It's the guy who's up. Mm. Well, you know so, who's up? Two is up. And also... Time's up. McDaniel, no more play time, dude. <laughs> play the up. honeymoon is <laughs> over, bro. The you don't know that the honeymoon is over. He can still spice it up. Like, come on, Mike bro. McDaniel can still bring some new lingerie dude. to this. This can still be... We can save this. So, so Tobes, hmm? I'm going to run this by you because you are, you know, you. Mm. There's a lot of people who think that this is a reset year, that the Dolphins are going to take a step backwards. I've heard that. I've heard that. I personally don't believe that. Yeah, me uh, neither. What do you think? I'll tell you. What I, I think, think here. I think it's going to look different. Mm -hmm. I think that if there's one thing that would piss me off this year, and I don't care what the wins losses are. Right, is if Mike McDaniel doesn't find a better way to transition this team from the first half to the second half, mm -hmm. I don't care how many games they win or lose, they're never going to be successful because like the, well, the better teams that you play 
are going to make adjustments and you're never going to be able to beat those good teams. Kind of sounds like you agree with Marcos then. He should be in the lab right now figuring it out. In the lab. No, 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 no. no. It's, 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 it's same Z. Being, being, being in the lab has nothing to do with what I'm talking about. Right? Where else can this you, is, Where can you learn This that? is things you have to learn as a coach. Where? Court right? side? What? Like, because, listen, maybe I do believe this. Oh. I believe this. I believe that they had last year the talent to win some of those games. Absolutely. They just didn't have the adjustments necessary to go into the second half. Mm -hmm. And while everybody's talking about, you know, oh, we sucked in second half, I'm trying to tell you why. And that has nothing to do with who is on the field. Do you want if, me to give you if that improves? Your team's going to look better while not having as good of a defense, which we don't know for sure. Because the problem with this time of year is nobody's playing football. Right. Do you want me to give you my thoughts on the reset? Yeah. I'll tell you, we got to take a break. Oh, I hate you. <laughs> this hour of Tobin and Leroy is sponsored by Miami Lakes Auto Mall.
Who's this, Tobin? <laughs> I mean, I, I I tell you, but I'm gonna allow Frog Boy. To, I, I always feel like I'm hot. Dougie Fresh. I tried. To, I had to say it. I had to say it early because it tells you who his name is in the box. Oh, yeah, of course, Dougie. Who who oh, doesn't yeah. remember his famous dance, the Dougie? The Dougie. That, first of all, right. that's not Dougie Fresh. Mm. Mm. Teach Should me how the Dougie came out thirty years after. Mm. That that song. wasn't an ode to Dougie Fresh. No. Are you sure? Positive. <laughs> There was a uh, they did a uh, they did a great contest yesterday at the Heat game of old versus young lingo, mm. where a dad and a son had to like figure out like things. Like, the kid like he said, oh. uh, "What what device was used to transfer uh, paper from person to person back then?" And the kid actually knew fax machine. I was like, oh, "Wow, I'm oh, impressed." Damn. And then they asked the dad, "What's cap?" Oh, he there's no way he knew. Did he, know? he knew. He knew. He knew. Wow, it's good. You know. Listen, a lot of us uh, oldies are caught up with the lingo. No cap. Mm. I want to give you guys a test. I'm not going to lie to you. There's a few words that I come across that I'm like, I wonder if these people know what that means. You know what Riz means? Yeah, Riz is a uh, is a great follow on Heat Twitter, Riz McGiz. <laughs> oh, yes, exactly. 100%. Was that for real? Riz? No, Riz is uh, your ability to woo a partner, usually unspoken. Yeah, like you know, mm. swagger, if you will. Mm. Why don't you just call it swagger? <laughs> it's very strange, these kids. Also, they start every sentence with bro. Like, oh. well, Miami's been doing that for I mean forever. I, I tell know. you I tell you what I, I tell you what I hate. What? Boss. Boss. What's so up, that, boss man? What's up, chief. 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 Yeah. That's usually a guy at the gas station who's looking to get a dollar. <laughs> What's up? What's up, boss? I saw a panhandler today. He had the most comfy chair at his. Oh, uh, it was like it looked like he stole it from a dining room. Oh wow! Like, you got a comfier chair than I do right now. That's amazing. <laughs> uh, Leroy, you know the players' championships going on. Uh, uh, we get a, can we get Marcos, a close? Yes. I'm, but, I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. What happened? Me and you gonna have a conversation. We're going to have a conversation, yes, but uh, we, we need an update from the players, which is brought I to know. us by the Young Watts Golf Shops. Home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee, serving golfers around the country since 1968. Now, here's the deal. It's early. Mm -hmm. So, um, early on in the round, oh, Tobes. Mm -hmm. Tobes, mm -hmm. you are not going to like this. What? At, at five under alone. In first place through 10, Rory McElroy. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, this is the uh, one for a lot of money, yeah? Oh, I think the winner gets something like $14 million or something. Jeez. Crazy. crazy. Um, hmm. There is three guys at four under. Xander Shoffley, Nick Taylor, and C.T. Pan. Uh, Michael Kim. Lee Hodges, Jason Day, Tommy Fleetwood. Here's who I picked to win. Ludwig Aberg. He is very young, and the guy is destroying golf right now. That's who I picked to win. Eric Van Royen. If you want to know who Eric Van Royen is, he wears the uh, the pants with the cuff on the bottom. What do you call those? Um, almost like joggers. There you go, joggers. He wears joggers to golf in. It looks ridiculous, but he does it. That's what he's known as. Um, you have a bunch at 300. The course must be playing pretty easy because there's a lot of guys under par. Um, bunch at two under. Let's see if there's any uh, people we know. Let's see. Victor Hovland, Patrick Cantlay, Lucas Glover, all at one under. Um, and that's really about it. That's the first wave. The second wave starts. Jordan Spieth is at plus one. Um, the that's the first wave. The second wave will tee off at about. Let me see. I got a time here. Twelve forty-five. Hold up a second. Hold up a second. Yes, sir. You guys see Dade South's comment? No. Is this real? 
Dade South says from Wikipedia. Oh, on the Dougie. Oh, the dance originated in Dallas, Texas, Uh-oh. where it took its name from similar moves performed by 1980s rapper Doug E. Fresh. Oh. Apologize, oh. Leroy. Oh. <laughs> Who's got the wrist now? Oh, oh my goodness, boy! You know what that is. You are a blind squirrel that stumbled upon an acorn. You had no idea. Also, no idea. Riz comes from charisma, not swag, dum dum. Oh my goodness, Marcos! Swagger and charisma, is Marcos, that- Marcos, Marcos, Marcos. Yeah. yeah, Marcos. Let me say this. Yep. When you leave today, <laughs> yep. You leave your card at the door. <laughs> Oh, you really? Gotta earn. Oh, okay. You gotta earn. Told him just <laughs> you told him you about the no. Dougie dance. You gotta no. come at me. No, 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 no. You the one that start asking questions about this. You gotta out Dougie. <laughs> okay, Riz. Charisma, <laughs> swagger, same thing. Marcos has the rib. Uh, speaking of golf, Leroy, and $14 yes, million, sir. that's about the average of what everybody makes on the Live Golf Tour. They make a lot of money. It's a lot of fun. Tell them about they, it. Um, oh, you, got you got it going because it's coming down. Golf, here, Bow this league is coming back to Miami from Friday, April 5th through Sunday, April 7th. And now's your chance to be there. Catch catch Live Golf at Doral's Blue Monster and see John Rahm, Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson take on the world's most fearsome course with live DJ, DJs and a euphoric headline concert. Tickets are selling fast, so grab yours now at livegolf.com. That's L-I-V golf.com. WQAM broadcasting live from the Ed Moore Sawgrass Auto Mall Studios. Shop massive.
Uh, I think he had a construction business of some sort that he was Did doing he? some things. I yeah. thought he was opening in a brewery. Uh, by the way, <laughs> let me correct something. Renovation, that's what it was. Yeah. yeah. The total purse in the players is $25 million. And The what is winner the gets 4.5. Man, I was about to say 14 seems like a lot, but I never know. I, like, I See, here's the thing. I didn't know if the PJ was trying to compete with Liv. So well, the, only, the, only, the only tournament is the, the – um, Tour championship, the winner gets a ten million dollar check. Can I? Can I? Can I tell you something that makes me laugh? What's, when what J Fig, when J Fig writes unmute, and then in all caps writes Marcos. Yeah, and then unmute. Hmm. Does she think the all caps makes it louder for us to see? I think so. Then the first unmute. Yeah. Sometimes I'm not even on the tab. <laughs> I don't have it open either, but I'm just <laughs> like laugh. It's just basically her yelling into clouds. Yeah. Because you didn't see it the first time, nope. But then you put the, but then you put it on all caps, and you're like, "Well, this will make it louder." Here, you know what that's like. The people that leave two uh, messages, <laughs> like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> hey, the first message is just as good as the third one because I, if I haven't listened to any of them, it doesn't matter. And this is how she bosses us around. She goes, "Well, leave it open." Oh yeah, sure. like, well, we got the channel, but I got to see how you know Dade South and I, and I mean, and Shmita Shmolik says fat shaming comment. Her yeah. she her head hurts because she was up in the clouds last. Yeah, night. she was. You know, mm. they think you think there's she only literally. People. She took a picture with her finger like this. And I could see Jimmy Butler behind the finger. Yeah. You think that only Denver plays in altitude, but JFig actually watched the game. Oh, like my <laughs> she wanted that Denver experience. Oh, man. Let's uh, mix it on up, dude. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I should have the instrumental in. Oh, my God. I'm, I'm ready to go. I just didn't have the instrumental. I was too busy looking at the chat, JFig. Yeah. My. Next time, I'm just going to send it to you, all caps. Have the mix it up ready. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, man. Is the mix bag no. is brought to you by Broward Health. Well, into your future. What do we got today, Frog Boy? All righty then. Let's get to the biggest bank robber in NFL history, Kirk Cousins. As you know, where's number eight? Yes. But there is a young superstar in Atlanta, the team he newly signed to, that also wears number eight, and that is Kyle Pitts. His superstar is a bit strong. That man. is a bit strong. Yeah, I don't exactly think Kyle Pitts has lived up to the hype yet. Yeah. Actually, his best game was against the Dolphins, if I'm not mistaken. I do was remember. Was it? He had like a one-handed It seems like he's given it up, because I saw on Twitter, he looks like he's, uh, he's pondering going back to his college number of 84. Mm. But Kirk Cousins... I don't, if I was Kirk Cousins, why would I care? What I, you know what his number should be? It should be a dollar sign. Pretty oh, much. That'd be cool. <laughs> Damn, that would be cool. Uh, all right. So what do we got? We have. Uh, is he is he giving it up or does he care? What's the where's he at with this? Let's see what Kirk has to say. Uh, he was funny about it. I said, "I'll write a check, whatever you know, foundation." What I'm not going to let you just give me the number. I want to make it worth your while. You know, make a donation, whatever it needs to be. And he said, "I just want you know targets every game." You know, he said, "I." He was joking. You know, he kind of winked. So I, I joked with him. I said, "Good answer." Hey, listen, that's 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 going to get you paid ultimately, anyway. I uh, I switched numbers one time in my entire life. Hmm. You're always thirty three until always Minnesota, 33. right? Until yeah. I got to Minnesota. Thirty three is a cool number. Why did and, someone have? And, it? and guess yeah, Harold. You know Harold. Oh, okay. My roommate. Man. Uh, you wouldn't and, give it to you, huh? No, it wasn't even that. He said, "Do you want it?" Yeah. And my reply: the player makes the number. The number don't make the player. It's cold. Mm. I like it. So, and plus, I wanted to wear Chuck Foreman's number. By the way, uh, eighty-eight on Patty Mills. Not as cool when he's not making threes. Eighty-eight. It's <laughs> cool, huh? Eighty-eight. Yeah, he's wearing eighty-eight. He is, is number. It big, is it big enough? <laughs> it was uh it's jamal it's funny it's jamal kane's number and jamal kane i guess wouldn't give it up huh. which i didn't know the two-way guy had pulled like that i thought they would have pulled like a i remember one time kz akpala had number four and then they traded for vic and then all of a sudden kz akpala wasn't number four anymore <laughs> <laughs> that's usually that's usually how it goes so like when i came in i could have taken 33 right and usually you give them a little cash or something like that. But I was like, no. Like, it's weird. You know what I mean? It's weird going to a team 
with a guy who's had a certain number all year. And I went there in the middle of season one before the season. Right. And then just take his number. I'm like, no, I ain't got it like that. I said, you keep the number. I'll, I'll, I'll get in where I fit in. So I got 44, but I had to get block number. I had to get double numbers. Mm. Yeah, I was wondering why. Why I not like, like a thirty? Four. Forty-four is cool too. Forty-four is cool too. It's forty-four a, it, 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 because it, it reminds me of my childhood watching the Vikings. I'm not, Chuck I'm Foreman at, spin cycle. I was gonna tell you, it didn't help you with the uh, with the fullback claims because forty-four oh, yeah. is a very fullback very number. Very fullback. Not really, because Chuck Foreman wasn't a fullback. The no day, one knows though, who a Chuck the Foreman back in the is. Day. Dude, that was, it was dude. black and white television. The spin 40, cycle. Forties is forties is fullback, dude. Forties fullbacks and really? safety. Yeah. What do you mean the spin cycle? I can't know pull up that. pictures of Chuck Foreman running the football. 33 is a cool number. He's he that's what he was called, spin cycle. Mm. Now uh, keep in mind the, the the one time I tried to spin in my career, I got about five of my teeth knocked out, and that was the end of that. Oh man. Uh I spun around. Chuck Foreman, <laughs> black and white TVs. That's what I no, thought. it's not black and white TVs. He played, I think he played with them when they went to four straight Super Bowls. What uh, <laughs> was the mixed bag, Marcos? Oh, uh, we heard in the whiny baby edition of the mixed bag. Most... Marcos complained about Tua. No, although people did want that in the bag. <laughs> so, did you put yourself in there? But I uh, heard from Nick Saban uh, as he complained about how college football is tainted. Uh, we have Deion Sanders now as he uh, discusses Issues with NIL and collectives. It's supposed to be name, image, and likeness that these youngsters are getting compensated from. I have no problem with that. I like that. I think they should be compensated. But it needs to be name, image, and likeness. So when we say name, image, and likeness, that means I need to see you endorsing something, right? So when you hear about these crazy figures, some of these college athletes are getting what do you see them on i got time maybe one guy a quarterback from alabama <laughs> and my son you know who has quite a few endorsements but really you have collectives that's what coach saban was saying you have collectives who who's gotten together which is another name for a bunch of handsomely compensated boosters gotten together and put money in a pot and say okay we got 20 million here Coach, here you go. Do your thing. So the coach said, well, let me go get this guy right here. I gave him one. That's not name, image, and likeness. That's just really a collective just breaking these kids off. That's not what it was meant for. Now, that upsets the little guy. How are we going to compete with that at HBCUs when I believe 7%, if that, gives back to the schools in which they graduated from? Okay, but like... But he's he's right. He's right though. And I, I've said oh, yeah. this. But here's I've the said thing. this. Okay, but here's the thing. Like, yes, he didn't stay with the little guy. Like, and look, it's no. great that he did go to Jackson State, but eventually he wanted to move on. Why? Because he was really great there and he wanted to go to greener pastures where he could get paid more money too. And I get it, it's not purely on an yeah. image image and likeness, but again, I don't have a problem with these kids getting paid, I broken don't. off money, whatever, because this freaking college football. Is baby NFL? It makes so much money, Leroy, and they keep I, acting I, I like under, there's but, not but enough to go I, 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 I understand this, but the argument and what started all of this was the players and their name bring so much money to the university that they should be compensated for it. Hence, name, image, and likeness. Yeah, but right? that's if you not have you if you have not played or you aren't doing any endorsements, how is that? Here's what you don't want. You don't want it to just pay pay the kid to come here. That's what they're talking about. They're not talking about kids. Not they don't want that. I don't care about that. I don't care if that happens because you want to know something. What if you recruit a badass offensive line that your star quarterback never gets touched? Those guys are never going to get commercials. Why shouldn't they get paid too? Why shouldn't they get recruited a little bit? Because I don't have a here, problem. With this. Name, name, image, and likeness is not for everybody. That's know, life. That, but that, but you see, that to me, you could still be a talent. You would agree there are positions that are just not as sexy. They're never going to get 
what the other positions, the flash positions get. And yet they're still just as important to winning. Look at Michigan, how you guys mauled people, right? you know, all the way to the championship. Mm-hmm. Correct. It should only be J.J. McCarthy? None of right. them big ugly should get something for not being able to be stopped? I agreed. And I just I think, like, I, I just here, think here, let's put it, let's put it this me, way. For me, just with these coaches, it's just a cop out. It's a cop out. But it's, but it, it really, here, I get what you're saying. And, and I'm not saying that these coaches aren't using this in two ways. They're making a valid point while telling their collective, y'all need to step up y'all game because we ain't got enough money in our kitty. Right? And I think that's what Nick Saban was doing. But but here's the deal. This is not for everybody. See, if I would have gone to Michigan, right, I wouldn't have gotten any name, image, and likeness till my third year. And I understand that, right? If I don't went to LSU because I'm a Louisiana guy, I might have got something a little sooner. Because I'm a Louisiana guy, my name, image, and likeness can be used more in Louisiana. But to have kids, because here's what you're doing. Let me ask you this. If you give a kid money before he plays one down, what's the motivation? That he's going to want to be good to get more money later? You you think an 18-year-old is thinking like that? Oh, my goodness. Dude, you're naive. You think that kids are just going to get fat cat syndrome? I think yeah, I do. that between the relatives and the kids wanting to get the money before they even do anything for the university, there's no incentive to do anything for the university. Now, it's not for everybody. I'm not saying this. But I'm saying if you start giving money before anybody has built anything at the university, you're setting yourself up for things like this because they're kids. I I know, but the thing that I just keep coming back to (laughs) is that it's not like, it. it, you know, it's a nice concept to have the school spirit thing, but man, dude, it's tough not to look at what this has become, Leroy, with Mm -hmm. the playoffs, the TV deals, and all this stuff. Should it all just go to the coaches? No. Like I'm I, not, I'm not I, saying, I'm not saying that, but I know but you're here, not. Like, let, let, let's look at it this way. Think of it this way. Okay. Nick Saban was making approximately $10 million a year. Why? Because he was the best. And when the he top. went from LSU to, uh, when he went from Miami to Alabama, why did Alabama lure him away from Miami? Because he was, because he was a coward. Okay. But, Please just play my game, you idiot. Play the game for a second. You understand what I'm saying? So while everybody in the world gets paid and gets money based on these things, nobody's getting paid like these kids to just show up. I mean, some whoa, whoa, some of these coaches are getting paid pretty crazy contracts and just showing no, up. No, they, but 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 they 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 have something, right? They've had success at a previous place. They've had success, like somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. But like that—that's just the difference of like you're seeing a guy be a defensive coordinator and you paying him a boatload of money to come be the coach and a kid being in high school. like But he's been a coach. He's been a coach at that level. Yeah, but you're recruiting them to play for your your faux amateur program, which is not amateur. It It's not. But, but again, if I have to put a blame on this, I'll put it on the NCAA. Agreed. Because when Agreed. they could have had control of that. this and come up with a plan instead of it just being the Wild Wild West, now I don't know how you can get any control over it. Give us uh, one more, Frogrates. Wow, that is a compliment I'll take. Uh, final item in the mix bag today: Isaiah Thomas recently sat down. Which one? With uh, the older. Oh, Isaiah Thomas. the OG. Yes, the OG Isaiah. Not the ruiner of organizations. <laughs> the the wow. former FIU Panthers basketball coach. Yeah. 
He uh, said hater that, of Michael Jordan. You know what? What's interesting during the Straymon Green interview that he had, he revealed that he wasn't aware of the beef he had with Michael Jordan until Last Dance came out. And I'm sorry, but I'm calling BS. Hold on, one if I had to be honest. Well, wasn't he the reason why? Wasn't who who didn't get invited to the uh, Dream Team? He did. Isaiah Thomas. That yeah. was him, right? That's why. That's his beef. Right. Yes. Correct. Uh, anyway, this is less about the beef and more of a very strange compliment in which he says Draymond Green is more of a point guard than Steph Curry. How do you look at the all-time great point guard conversation? When you define the position of point guard, this is an era where they say we are positionless. But then you want to say, OK, well, he's a point guard. He's not a point guard. And the Golden State Warriors, you are the point guard. Mm. You, you, you have more assists than Steph. You bring the ball up, you you initiate the offense, you set the defense, you 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 run the show. Steph comes off screens, he catches and he shoots, and he's one of the greatest shoes, shooters ever. I won a different way. As a point guard, I led my my team, and I may be the only one who's done this as a point guard, where I've led my team in scoring. And assists mm, to back to back championships. He was when I look at Steph, he was when he talks about the people that he's emulated, Did Wade do that? he talks about Reggie Miller, he talks about Ray Allen. But when you talk about the point guard position, the way I was taught and the way I think of it, for the Golden State Warriors, you're the point guard, and that's okay. Hmm. I get what he's saying, but it's. Yeah. I get what he's saying. It's different times, different. I mean, like, look, Draymond ain't breaking nobody off, dude. Steph Curry is <laughs> Steph Curry is not even in a positional conversation. The dude's one of the greatest players of all time. That guy, right. he, he acknowledged he, that he changed an era of basketball. But like, I get it. Draymond is that point forward type of thing. That's that's become all the rage. We see that with Bam. We see that man, Bam. That sweet ass assist, man. I wish that was in a win. Mm. God, that was a sweet ass assist. He outjoked the Joker. He did. <laughs> Stupid. Win with some class. <laughs> Win with grace. <laughs> Bully. Jeez. Great. Uh, we'll take a quick break. Get back into the Dolphins. little cat talk. A uh, hodgepodge of things. And I got some more stuff on the heat as well next hour. Back after this. Previously on Tobin and Leroy. It ain't win one for the Gipper anymore, right? It's win one for the Tipper. The number one sports adjacent show in America. Hawk and Crowder with Solana and the Great Jimmy. Sports talk.
moment of Leroy. 560 WQAM. Let's get into our cat talk here. Brought to us by our friends over at Celsius. Hockey fans, don't sit this one out when it's game time. Make Celsius a part of your play and get that energy up. Game day is fueled by Celsius Essential. Energy drinks the official energy drink of your Florida Panthers. I would open that up, but I just had a uh, cup of Cuban coffee, so yes. I'm going to. It was. It was very. That has never stopped you before. Yeah, but I don't want to. You know, Marcos. He, he, oh. He's trying to. He's trying to contain my uh, caffeine consumption a little yeah, bit. But it's man, not healthy. Dude. It's not healthy. I, we don't know that it's not healthy. I think we do. I yeah, think no, we I think there's daily limits healthy. and you're know. exceeding it. I don't know. About that. <laughs> I'm fine. You know, just, you know, Michael Malone is just a <laughs> oh my great God. bum. But anyway, um, the Cats, they're back at it tonight, mm-hmm. taking on the Carolina Hurricanes. That gets going. Seven o'clock is your puck drop tonight, Carolina. 84 points on the season of, you know, good it's not 94 yeah it's not 94 points dude like that panthers are rolling right now looking good but uh we're gonna give them a little something tonight you know give, give these carolina hurricanes a little something because well, you know what's gonna <clears throat> you know what's gonna happen Ooh, doc rivers there's gonna be 17 fights oh yeah Hmm. Oh yeah, and we owe them something because they got us the last time—a mere one nothing win. Mm. I'm looking for a little, a little vengeance, Leroy. All right, I don't like, I don't like uh, blips on the on the radar. And the, you know, I know the cats aren't going to let me down. Is that the only <laughs> loss they've had in the last? Wow, they right? lost. The, well, they lost the Flyers uh, a okay. couple games ago. A couple games ago, two one. You know, when they lose, they don't lose by very much, Leroy. Yeah. In fact, their last losses are two one of the Flyers. One out of the Hurricanes and two one of the Flyers. Flyers, Ooh. Flyers. Yep. Uh-oh. The last time the Panthers lost a game in which they gave up more than two goals was Minnesota. They lost six to four, and that was on mm. January nineteenth. My son wasn't even seven; wasn't even eight years old yet. Wow, that was a year ago. Crazy. Six to four, they lost that game. Anyway, back at it tonight. You can hear that game right here, 560 WQAM. That is your cat talk. Yeah. Meanwhile, Miami Dolphins yesterday introduced uh, Janu Smith, their new Ooh. tight end. Okay. Paws up, FIU alum. Yeah. Played with the uh, Atlanta Falcons yesterday, or last year, excuse me. Mm. Some would say he was better than, uh, than uh, the old Kyle Pitts, you know, who was whining about getting more targets. I did hear that. I did hear that. And uh, Janu, he uh, he talked about the reasons he wanted to join the Dolphins, Leroy, mm-hmm. and he says, numero uno is to win it all. <sighs> Man, I, it's, that list is endless. You know, I guess I'll start with, uh, you know, the opportunity to, 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 to go and win a, a world championship. Um, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, adding me, um, you know, to this offense and, and to the system and, and to this team ultimately – um, you know, that could be um, a, a solution into to helping it, to helping us now um, get to where we want to go. Um, you know, that's obviously still still a lot of work that needs to be put in. Obviously, still still a lot in front of us. Um, but you know, I, I just saw that vision, um, and you know, I thought it was a great opportunity. Yeah, don't tell Janu that there are, there's a reset happening, dude. Oh, you guys God. are all saying, oh, we're gonna be a bad team, and we can't shut up. You know, I heard this take yesterday on NFL Network. They're like, oh, well, Tua, this is what happens when you sign a big deal. Uh, you lose all your pieces. Like, mm-hmm. hey, I don't know about you, so but I see it happening all over the league. Didn't we whine all over the place because Patrick Mahomes had a bunch of receivers with lobster claws? I think that's because they couldn't pay Tyreek Hill. It happens, dude. You lose some good players. Stop blaming Tua like he's holding up the Dolphins for ransom. But they didn't get rid of Chris Jones. Well, I mean, they, they, but it took them a year of winning a Super Bowl and the cap going up. You know, they, they did but, pay. Regardless, let, let, of, what, let's re, not forget, up, regardless let's not, of what the status was, Chris Jones was always there. Leroy, yes. let's not forget Chris Jones sat in the stands for the first week last year. That was he wasn't happy. And he was prepared to sit. And if he was a man, he, which, uh, you know, I'm, 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 if he was a man, he would have kept that holdout going. Can I just say this? Jones, brother. Those two brothers have me thinking, just in case, I ain't going to mess with nobody with the last name Jones. Oh, Might be yeah. related. 
He's he's not, but you know, he may be more terrifying than the other ones too. Mm. Um, but he also had some great words for QB one, who wow, you keep poo pooing on, Marcos. Well, what do you got to say to Janu? He's big. Not too much. <laughs> not too much to say to that guy. You know, just looking at Tua um, on paper, um, he, he's got it. You know what I mean? In my in my eyes, I think he's one of the top quarterbacks in this league. I think he's one of, if not the most accurate quarterback in this league. Um, and that's just from me watching from the outside end. You know, now that I'm actually here, I'm sure I get to see that firsthand. And, um, you know, he's a great player, um, a great leader, um, had, a, had a lot of respect for his game since he played at Alabama. And, um, you know, just uh, seeing him play was always, he was always a fun guy to watch play. And I'm excited to be catching passes from him now. Yeah, but and you want to know something, Marcos? You you yeah. scoffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's one thing to watch it from the battlefield, but it's another thing to be in the foxhole with Tua. Yeah. So you better watch out, dude, because if John, you know what? I, I I'm gonna respect Johnu Smith's opinion of Tua, not yeah. some amphibian. You know what, though? See, that's that's fraudulent praise there. Tyreek oh, Hill okay, tried to sneak okay, this okay. in there. You know, it's super easy. Let me, let me tell you something about being a quarterback. You know, I got a few snaps under center during my peewee days. <laughs> what? Let me tell you what's important about being quarterback. You need balance, all right? You need to throw off the correct foot. You need balance. And you know when you get your most accurate passes, when you're stable and you're balanced. You know when it's easy to be stable and balanced? When you're not moving anywhere because you're a statue. So, of course, he's going to be the most accurate quarterback. He's never moving. Dude, you know, he, he does roll out quite a bit. The only thing he rolls <laughs> is cinnamon rolls for dude, Christmas. Dude. Stop fat shaming <laughs> him. About, Enough for you. Wait, no. wait, wait, wait. Marcos, you know they like do what? roll him out a lot. Yeah, because he's gargantuan, so he can no longer walk. <laughs> they have to roll him out onto the field. I, I don't like what he's doing. I don't like what you're doing. And quite frankly, I don't like what okay. you're doing. So you're going to tell me, him, right? Not me. No, I, I'm talking about Frog Boy over here. Oh, okay. Because he. Sick of this. He's no. the most accurate. He's the most he accurate. is the most accurate. Whatever. He's a puppet, dude. He's a puppet with the, with the largest. Wait, can I ask you a question? How many other puppets have led the league in passing? You keep saying that. What did he do against the Because I want to. Listen. Here's it. I just want I just want you to at least acknowledge that it's no small feat. It's no small feat to lead the league in passing. You make it sound like anybody could do it. You see how he stumbles? He has small feet. He does have small feet. I don't know. Maybe he's small hands. No, he doesn't have small hands. Although he does, he does fumble a lot. He does fumble a lot. He does fumble a lot. But that's Eichenberg's fault, dude. No way. Oh, it's no all way. Eichenberg. Eichenberg sucks. <laughs> no, it's that Connor Williams who tried to hold out for some reason. Dude, I'm so glad we got a new center. I don't care how much the Titan fans are happy he's gone. <laughs> they were so happy. We got Eichenberg from give Tennessee. Me, give me anybody else at center besides Eichenberg and those lollipop snaps. We got we got Tennessee Eichenberg now. Wonderful. Maybe he'll stay upright. I was a little worried that he's uh, he's not 300. I thought I feel I feel like it's a center. You, you right. want a lighter center? I mean, they they. This it is all the rage like, now. They want these no, athletic some, centers. Yeah. yeah. No, it's it. Do the they move the here? Your center. Here's how it used to go. Your center and your left guard were your lo- smallest. Uh, lineman. Uh, your smallest lineman because they pulled. Mm. Right. If you had a center that could pull, if you go all, all the way back to like Damani's, the um, who's Damani um, from the Steelers. He's a Hall of Famer. Is it Damani? Uh, I can't think of his last name. Ogletree. Um, no, I made that up. Um, when you look at some of your your best centers, um, a lot of them aren't three hundred pounds because they move a lot, so that's no big deal. Um, my left guard when I was in Minnesota was two sixty five. He's also a Hall of Famer. Two sixty five. Yeah, he played yeah, tight end in college. Yeah, it's actually Randall McDaniel, Hall of Famer. So, so that's not like that's not a big deal, right? Usually, your left your left tackle is the, you know the most athletic, um, and and they're getting big. Your right tackle and your right guard mooses. Uh, John U. Smith also said that one of the reasons he wanted to come here, he liked hard knocks. Oh, John Lou was a fan of the Hard Knocks. Interesting. It was a good show. Um, I guess I got to get at the Hard Knocks, man. Hard Knocks told me a lot. Hard Knocks, uh, you know, was was a, was a big help in helping me make my decision. So, 
What uh, what in particular? <laughs> no, nah, no, seriousness, man. I was I just actually uh got done what I just actually watched it uh this off season. I actually was, was late watching it, but I you know it was off season, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna kick back and you know see what these guys are about. So um, you know, cut it on and kind of just caught myself uh, binge watching. I'm like, man, that's something you know, that'd be the, that'd be a special group to be a part of, uh, wow. you know, so wow. um, all of these guys, man, um, you know, from, from from Mike McDaniel, Chris Greer, um, you know, everybody, you know, in this building in the front office, um, you know, collectively made, you know, made it happen. And uh, obviously, uh, you know, everything happened on our end as well. So this is home for me. Um, at the end of the day, that also was a huge factor in me being here. Um, and I'm just excited, man, to be able to play for a city in, in which I live, which my family lives, and be able to represent the city of Miami once again. How much for Stephen Ross to make it so that Liv Schreiber just lives in-house as, like, the in-house announcement guy, just so Johnny Smith feels at home? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you can see yeah. what Ross got to do. He can pay him. You know what to make him feel at home? Wins. Ass trying. Oh. <laughs> he go on the beach, he'll be like, home sweet home, baby. Mm. Oh man! Take a quick break. We'll get back into the heat. Eric Spolstra, pretty pissed after yesterday's game. That's next. This hour of Tobin and Leroy is sponsored by Miami Lakes Auto Mall. Kendall Dot.
Auto Mall, Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram, home of the $8,000 trade. Kendall Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram.com. Bum, bum. 15 minutes of heat here for you on 560 WQAM. Hey, if you guys want to go see Burt Kreischer and his fully loaded comedy festival, they are coming to the I Think Financial Amphitheater in West Palm this June. And we've got your chance to win tickets. If you guys want to enter our contest, text the word COMEDIAN to 20357. That's COMEDIAN to 20357. Burt Kreischer and his fully loaded comedy festival is a live nation show. Oh, hello, Jennifer. Hello. Uh, It's good to see that you made it down from the upper deck to join the show today. You know, I don't know why you guys are making fun of me for sitting up there. Why don't you guys humble down? You need to relax. Oh, I humbled oh, all the way down. <laughs> yeah, I saw you humble all the way down. Don't be mad at me. I, I was where I was supposed to be. He's the one who's. Uh, I know where he was. I saw who's him. He's meandering down to the, uh, the to, to to areas unknown. So, but is this I'm yours? not mad. I enjoyed my seats. Is this yours? Uh, this, uh, the, the courtside club? Yeah, no, that's not mine. Not yours. Oh, I could go courtside. I could peruse down there. They don't stop you if you got a credential. If you walk in there with confidence, they're like, oh, he looks like the That's true. That is a home. thing. If so, you walk in there with a little bit. Of, you know what I've noticed now, though? Do you see these digital tickets? Yes. That they have, like, you can't do, sc- that, like, it has, oh, like, no a, screenshot. It has like, a graphic now. Yes, yes, yes. We'll figure that out, too. Oh, God. We'll All figure right. that out, too. Jeez, what do you mean? So I had to find out because Fonz went to Burner Boy. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. So he gave me updates, showed me some pictures. He's a performer. Nice. He know. said he's um, he said he's like um, he's equivalent to like the weekend oh, in like Nigeria heart, right? and so it was a whole show. It wasn't just because the thing I hate about um, why I would never go to a rap concert. They just go up there and do their songs, yeah, gotcha. track and all that. He had a band. No, Burner Boy had a band, and you know, so he said it was a, it was a show. Good, I like good that. Job. By the way, uh, we're going to be at spring training tomorrow, live from Jupiter, Ooh. Leroy. We will uh, fight. I'm going to tell you something so right I'm now. I'm going to tell you right now. Why? Because I know, listen, I already, I saw pictures. What do you mean? I put, I put notes. Hmm? Mm. Some guys that might ought to run some laps around the track. Oh. That's what I was going to get to. <laughs> are you really? Are you really <laughs> not? <laughs> like, if you see Sixto Sanchez tomorrow, <laughs> just leave him alone. I I will. I will. Doesn't sound like you will. Doesn't sound like you will. The only person I want to put on a couple of pounds is Yuli. Yuri. 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 I think he had another blister yesterday. <gasps> He's got this Josh Beckett thing going on. I don't like. Oh this. my god! I didn't know that was a thing Dude, until. You no, know, it is. You ever tried throwing a baseball with a blister? Dude, it sucks. Josh Beckett was like oh. the had the worst blisters in the world. Mm. You know, like that. You was know how old. you fix? You know how you fix the blisters? Super glue. Uh, oh, I thought you were gonna say uh, urine. No, super glue. Oh, what? what? <laughs> I can't believe you accuse Moises Alou's entire family of being hand. Don't accuse anything? He's a hand peer. Everybody knows. Oh, that. Uh, you can't. <laughs> we didn't. No, who did we talked to? We talked yeah. to somebody recently about that, didn't we? Talk to uh, what the hell did we talk? Justin Bohr. Didn't he admit to being a hand peer? I don't think no. he did, bro. I don't think, I think he did. I don't know something about the bear hands or whatever anyway let's get back into the heat he lose to the nuggets yesterday 100 to 88 oh was pissed after the game mm-hmm. you know jimmy butler has only averaged four free throws over his last four games so that means uh, he's trying to avoid contact well there's a theory going around right now actually in the nba this is what's interesting little tinfoil hat oh we ain't have we tied all this high scoring so we ain't calling all that, those tiki there is that's the thought that, that adam silver yeah. When they met at the All Star break, that Adam Silver told the referees, "Let, let them, them play, let them play a little bit." Oh, and Jimmy Butler is apparently to to maybe some eyes not getting the calls that he typically does. Now, I will say, Jimmy Butler is not a flopper. You know, there's a, there's a lot of players out there that are, you know, they 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 take advantage of you know freedom of movement. They exaggerate. Jimmy Butler usually just gets right into contact on things, but they're not. Calling free throws at the rate they he hasn't under. been as aggressive either. Point you should note that. But well, I, I don't disagree with you. I don't disagree with you on that. Um, but here is Eric Spolstra on uh, Jimmy's free throws and lack thereof lately. 
That's an adjustment from the league, you know, staff. I think that's an adjustment from the league. You know, staff has been talking about that, that uh, I didn't receive a memo uh, about it, um, but it, it's clear that they're, they're calling it a little bit more like that. So, hey, we have to make the adjustment, and I think that's a good adjustment. Go to score, not necessarily to, to um, you know, to draw fouls. Now, Jimmy's got a rugged game, so he's not going to draw fouls. He's going to... Uh, wherever the contact may be. And, yeah, from my vantage point, it looks like some of those, you know, um, you know, are fouls. You know, certainly in the last uh, uh, three or four games um, that those were typically, you know, fouls. But th that's not why we're losing games. He'll make the adjustment, you know, whether he has to just go into shot-making mode. That might have to be the adjustment. Uh, I have to do a better job, you know, getting our guys uh, into their – strength zones where we can still be aggressive and attack uh, but hit different parts of our uh, menu um, menu and we'll get to work on that uh, you know yes <laughs> it's, it's frustrating but um, you know all we're going to focus on is what we can do to get better and and have a great great road trip Garso! Garso! I'd like to order something off of your menu uh, what can we help you with today, sir? More than five threes. <laughs> yeah, like was that a was that a thing where like they just ran out? You know, <laughs> like are you, like what's going on in the back? Y'all ran out of y'all ran out of threes. Problem was Duncan Robinson wants to keep hitting all these layups, knowing I have a parlay for two and a half threes. <laughs> what are we doing here? <laughs> You didn't have the Bam out of bio over on threes yesterday. I did not. I did not. So, so I here's the deal. Like, here's the I deal. Bam? Here's but 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 here's what happens with dunks, right? Keep in mind, he's not short. So a lot of times he's shooting over somebody. That didn't happen. So what he was doing was pumping and going to the rim. Now he's making the right basketball play. But I think as far as the heat goes, they want him to shoot contested threes. He's that good. But if you, if you get into a game and you see where the game is going, sometimes you just need to put the ball, the, the, the ball in a basket. So I don't always fault him for that. I don't always well, fault him for if the three's not there, finding other ways to score because nobody was really scoring. Look, this is one of the things that that Denver does like to do, though. Denver does like to tri they they do like to force you into you know non efficient twos, mid range shots. It's a lot of the reasons. Right. It's a lot of the reasons why they kind of let Bam eat in the finals. Like that's that's what their their point of it was. They do not like to try and let guys take threes, and they do a really good job of it. Uh, the Heat got completely. See, here's the thing: the Heat love playing in the mud. But sometimes you need to be able to get out of the mud like a mud skipper, okay? You need to be able to play in both. And the problem was yesterday when the Denver Nuggets decided to turn on the Jets, where were the Miami Heat? Stuck in the mud. So you need to fight your out of way. You got to be able to be an all-terrain vehicle. You can't just stay there. You, you can't going. just you allow yourself to sink. Going, right? You got to keep going. <laughs> what do you right? mean? What, 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 I'm not trying doing? to keep going. Hold I'm done. just telling you. That Hold was done. the difference. You lost me at mud the first mud mud skipper. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's what that's is a mud skipper. skipper? Yeah, what is a mud skipper? Is a fish that can be in water and land. Really? Yep. That is not true. Sounds like a okay, frog dude. to me. No, it's not a frog. When, you, when, you, when, 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 the next time I see a fish crossing the street, it'll be the first time. Okay, you can you can laugh Ew. all you want, dude. You tell me that mud skipper. I know is not China has fish that around. bounce across. I, I like, really like. You always do this with me. First of all, you, you you question me on the Dougie, which I knew was, of course, an ode to Dougie Fresh. And secondly, today, you're now doing it on the Muddy, which I knew a mud skipper was a fish that can be on land. And I just, I, I don't like the doubt. I'll tell you what, though. When it is on land, it's fighting for its life. For <laughs> 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 it's, it's life, dude. Oh, my goodness. It's, it's doing its best. To gather all the air that, or all the oxygen that is in the air around it, Good boy, big mouth. Um, let's hear from Eric Spolstra. One thing we did. Speaking of skippers, uh, 
Tyler Hero has been skipping a lot of games via injury. I mean, he's not uh, skipping them. Well, he's not skipping them, but he's not playing in them either. Uh, he was asked yesterday about Tyler Hero before the game, and as you would think that he'd do, they gave you a ton of insight into it. Not a timetable question, I promise, but is Tyler progressing in a way that... Man, he's making progress. Um, I don't have any more, you know, for you, um, but he's doing everything he needs to do. Yeah. Has anybody seen Tyler? We Do no. we have to go to the old Robbie and, and Tobin... Uh, method of determining health. You know, have I we was, seen his gate? I <laughs> know. I didn't see. He his, hasn't I been around. I haven't, I haven't seen him. I don't know. I don't think he was which on the means, bench. Which either. means he's not close. Which means he could be in a cast. Right. Yeah. Mm. So mud skipper, huh? Look at this thing. Just Told you, dude. Doing it's best. Yeah, I was looking at that. You can't tell me that doesn't look like Jokic. No. <laughs> you know what they're going. <laughs> You know what they're doing? Where's the water? <laughs> We're fish. Why do they look like I they have arms? Need water. That one they guy looks. The one fish on the right looks swole, like he's been lifting weights. Yeah. They have arms. They they walk using their arms. Shreve and Shmona goes. Tyler Hero is our Kate Middleton. <laughs> oh, <laughs> he's just really missing. We don't know. You're gonna see a photo. Heat Twitter's gonna what gonna is put out. What's going a, on with all of that? I don't understand. They're gonna, is, they're gonna put out a Photoshop picture of Tyler Hero in Detroit. Like, wait a minute, that's from last year. Oh, no. Remember that outfit? Please, someone. All right, we'll Ooh, take a quick dude, break. I had the little, you know what I had? Where was I? I was at a restaurant, and I had um, the little baby churros with the hot caramel. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> now, I found out I can't eat a cold churro. They must be hot. The uh, That sounds like it should be on the heat sty- uh, the heat's menu, a, ch- mm. a mini churro. That'd be good. Yes. Had some dipping dots yesterday, also. Miss Tyler, dots. I think dipping dots are disgusting. How could you say that about the future science of ice cream? The Ooh, it's been a future science for quite it's some time. Oh, you put something in your mouth so that it melts to ice cream. It's Why? very weird. Why not just eat ice cream? It's in little balls. <laughs> it's cute. <laughs> Take a break. Back after this.
me what that means. Make a slick comment and see what that brings. Yeah, I tell you, our camera's been on point today with uh, just being remote awesome. So shout out to the uh, whoever fixed the reset on this. That was you, mm-hmm. Fig. Well done. No, no, that was, uh, you know what? Yeah, we'll give Fig credit. That was Fig. You go. Well, you want to be nice to me? Yeah, I mean. Minus look, one. Look at those seats. Wow. For deception. <laughs> Minus uh, one. Quickly give you a golf update from the Evan Watts Golf Shop. Some of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers around the country since 1968. And currently, we have the Players' Championship going, which we erroneously said was a grand prize of $14 million. Oh, oh <laughs> big money. But uh, Rory McElroy is still in the lead through 15 right now. He is eight under par. So there you go. That is your golf update brought to us by the Edwin Watts Golf Shop. Some of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee. Serving golfers around the country since 19. 19- 68. Rory McElroy always screwing the pooch gives me the goosies because, you know, he had some nefarious things to say about the Miami Heat fans back in the day, and yeah. I've never forgiven him for it. You're right there, dude. You're right there when it comes to... Oh, you and your damn personal email. <laughs> Will you grow up? Can I just tell you something? This is, this is double jeopardy, Can dude. You grow up and get an email that is that is that uh, to my personal it's not even your name because <laughs> that one's even longer oh my <laughs> long God, fine, so many letters go numbers. sign into your actual email this guy you don't have a phone is it my fault or is it my fault a company I put it out for you too it is your fault you could have been done that? that and when so i said and and when i when i what what, what, what? yeah what's up with that Rory. Oh, he was just talking. I'm just about talking it. about it. I was just talking about it. But I'm sorry. Up. I was oh, outside. No. I was outside trying to figure out why there was so much noise. Oh. The noise okay. should be tapering down. Well, yes, since you were everything so, underneath me is still shaking. Well, well, Frog Boy, while he's trying to grow up and find the goosies, no goosies oh, list. Dude. Can you do me a favor, Leroy, and give us a weather update from the Demesman and Dover law firm? I sure can. Your accident attorneys.com free consultations 24 7. Call them at 866 954 more. At my house, there's a lot of thunder and lightning, but that's probably just the guys nailing my roof. Mm. Uh, relatively calm skies. It is partly cloudy. I'd say the winds are five to 10 miles an hour out of the east, northeast. And I would say temperatures are about 81, 82 degrees. Mm. How do you do, Kermit Cousins? That's pretty damn good there. That's some of my best work. That was some of your best work, as it is exactly 82 degrees. It is indeed partly cloudy. Winds at four miles per hour coming out of the east. Northeast. And there is I'm looking a, at my clouds, baby. There is a small, <laughs> small chance of rain. Yeah. But Here, here's all you need to know. Hot when the winds are coming out of the east, that's the warm, warmer air because of the warmer water. So you might get some showers near the beach or what have you. Uh, it's apparently this upcoming Monday could potentially reach a high of 90 degrees. Oof. Yeah, it's getting hot again. All right. Already? I thought we had to get us into April. Hey, have you accessed your uh, your email like a professional? <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you. I have. I have. And I really appreciate you sending it to Sugar Nasty 22 I really appreciate You're you. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Really Let's good. get to Goosey's No Goosey's. Number one on the list. All right. What say you, Nikola Krokic? Spo! I'm getting good with these. Spo recently uh, commented on Bam Adebayo's defense. I want to know if the head coach, which is what he calls himself now, uh, doesn't you've heard him say that, right? Even this head, coach. he has been referring to himself in the third person. He's like, person? even the head coach is pleased with that. And I'm like, why he does? Wait, that. so he doesn't refer to himself as the third person by oh, that name. means that means he think he big time now. But the title, the title. Exactly. So the head coach has something to say on Bam Adebayo's defense. This is what he had to say. All right, Eric Spolstra. 
in the league that well, there's no one better in the league that that can negotiate this. First of all, nobody will go toe to toe, minute for minute, uh, against Jokic, other than Bam. Bam signs up for that, and he'll put himself out there, and be vulnerable, you know, to the competition. And that's that's vulnerable. What are we making a love movie? I'm very vulnerable right now because of that. <laughs> damn, vulnerable. Like, could you imagine me saying that, Coach? It's fourth and one for the Super Bowl. Put me in right now. I'm feeling vulnerable. I can get it. Hold me. It's right. The competitor of all competitors, uh, and you know that that just sets the tone. But it is difficult. You know, you have to negotiate so many different things uh, uh, at the top of the floor, in the post. You know, they started to post them up a little bit more, and then once you start getting comfortable with that, go to the two-man action, and then you have to do pick and roll basketball. You know, and then ball all of a sudden will go back to him, and, and then now you have to play, you know, him off the dribble and uh, and try to, you know, disrupt passing angles and all, and all that. Uh, um, you know, but that's why Bam is Bam. You know, that's why I always say year after year he, he should be in the consider- consideration for Defense Player of the Year because he can do things and will put himself out there to try to do things that – the majority of the league won't because it's easier just to not not do it, not not you know. Because sometimes you're going to get beat. You know, Jokic is a great player, and sometimes you're going to get scored on or foul or uh, you know you have play your pick and roll defense. The ball goes back to him and he scores, and somebody else didn't do their job. Like there's a lot of things that go into it, um, and they're a comp- complex team. You know. You feel like you can, you have a handle on them. I mean, we still hold held them to a uh, hundred. You feel like you have a handle on them, and then all of a sudden they can just separate. Uh, and those skirmishes, at this point, they do that. I think better than anybody else in the league. Thanks, coach. Thank you. Locker's open. All right. Well, it's a great speech. It's a great speech, and the speech gives me the gooseies. I, I did enjoy that. Goosies. Uh, but then the goosies were taken away with the final score. So, you know, no oh, goosies. Okay. Dang. Oh, a reverse goosies? A refund on the goosies? <laughs> I put I them have... in my Amazon cart and I ordered. Then all of a sudden I was like, you I know have... what? Yeah, Cancel that order. Save I have the goosies later. because this is, was about Bam. Goosies. This wasn't about the game. It was about Bam and how he... Individual individually uh deals with Jokic. So no, I got the goosies. All right. J Fig, what about you? I don't have the goosies. I couldn't oh, feel cool. anything that he said from where I was sitting. So point for J Man. Marcos? Uh, yeah, it's hard to overcome the fact that we lost. I'm sure he did a great job, but uh, it's gonna be no goosies for me as well. No, no goosies. Uh, what's number two there, Marcos? Number two, uh, Tyreek Hill. He's been a good soldier this mm. free agency period. He was recently crooting, as you'll see in this picture here. Our boy Tyreek Hill crooting. Does that give you goosies? Or no goosies. All right. Tyreek Hill. Uh, he posted, just throwing this out there, Michael Thomas in Miami would be, and then he puts the happy tears emoji. Mm. And then Hunter Renfro, who is recently released, he then comments, or me. To which Tyreek Hill then says, you want me to three-way onto a call with me and Mike? <laughs> so huh here's the thing yeah no goosies because it's a fake hunter renfro what he got no goosies. it's not my it's not <laughs> real, real hunter renfro that's a fake what now who would be diabolical do you really to... think that he would answer that of course yeah. he's Tyree Tyree knowing harry kill j fig I mean, so your research before you answer back to people he, he shoots from the hip and there's no way that he oh, reminds you of somebody you know. 
to that guy's credit though it was a pretty legit username hunter renfro 13 it's not like it was like you know underscore underscore or something like that. this happened a couple times yesterday with people on see it used to be people used to fake adam schefter yeah. you'd be adam schnarfter or ian Ribbitport. you know like you'd be some kind of fake <laughs> reporter and now yesterday i saw a bunch of doll fans trolling because they were changing their accounts to hunter renfro and mike williams <laughs> But then I was like, wait a minute, Mike Williams wouldn't slander Justin Herbert like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Since too much liberty is on Twitter lately. I don't like it. I mean, this I, is Elon Musk, dude. I, he I does know. It. He ruined He's the game eight. for us. I would say I got split goosies. Goosies on the attempt, but no goosies on the execution because he got he got got. Yes. Goosies. I have, I have goosies on... His mind was in the right place. Yep. Mm. Right? His heart was in the right but place. Th- his heart was in the right place. But then I have no goosies because he got got. Yep. yep. to the best of us, guys. <laughs> no, no goosies. goosies. J-Fig? I agree. Also, Elon Musk has something to do with this. So, no Fix goosies. It. Fix it. <laughs> Bring it back to how it used to be back then. Uh, Marcos? I got no goosies, not only because it's fake, but also because I know what you're doing, Tyreek Hill. You're trying to get all the attention off of your your Tua comments oh, from two weeks ago. God. I know. I'm on to this, you, dude. bro. No, no goosies. God, Wouldn't you like? He made him. He was accountable for him last for for on the uh, on the pivot. Can't even can't even take a constructive conversation without crying about. <sighs> Give us one more, Frog Boy. Uh, then let's go to a feel-good story, shall we? Not sure if you guys are familiar with this story. It is one developing with a retired UFC fighter. Uh, recently, UFC legend Mark Coleman saved his parents from a house fire, went in a burning building, and was able to save his parents. He was hospitalized. Yeah, he was in a coma. And uh, is now awake from that coma. Wow. wow. UFC legend. Mark yeah, he went Cole. back in the ha- Do you know what happened, dude? This is the story, yeah. Leroy. So Marco, a former UFC champion, he, he the dog woke him up and woke up the house that hey, dude, the, the, the house is on fire. House is on fire. And Coleman goes, saves the parents, but then goes back in the house because he's got to save the dog. I know. And uh then he ended up in the hospital, but he is now awake. And he said, apparently, to his parents, he says, I'm the happiest man in the world. Yeah. So that is a, that's a Goosey's Galore story. Yeah. yeah. That's what? what Goosey's, Goosey's on Goosey's. Goosey's Galore. Goosey's. 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 It's kind of like he got pinched in the tush. He's like, Goosey's. <laughs> Goosey's. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. Back after this. But first, Leroy, but first. you know what else is goosies? What? Live golf. <gasps> Golf's boldest league is coming back to Miami from Friday, April 5th through Sunday, April 7th. And now's your chance to be there. Catch Live Golf at Doral's Blue Monster and see John Rom, Brooks Kepka, and Dustin Johnson take on one of the world's most fearsome golf courses with live DJs and euphoric and a euphoric headline concert. Tickets are selling fast, so grab yours now at livegolf.com. That's livgolf.com. WQAM.
No idea. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Tobin and Leroy here with you. 560 WQAM. Let's get to our headlines. Brought to you by the new Palmetto Ford Truck Supercenter. Why buy your truck at a car store? Palmetto Ford. We know trucks. Uh, I'm going to make Leroy sad here. I decided I'm going to start this hour by making Leroy sad. And mm. uh, if you guys are watching on uh, YouTube, you might want to oh, cover man. your eyes, doll fans. You might want to cover your eyes. I'm just letting you know now. Like, don't, you know, don't be upset. Look but uh, Christian Wilkins is wearing his Raiders gear. And this is uh, how he introed himself to Raider Nation. You have a message for Raider Nation. It's too much excitement for me right now. That's a hundred and ten million dollars of excitement. No, that's just him. Give him for Raider Nation. Raiders. They're gonna love Christian Wilkins. I'm gonna, gonna miss his attitude so much. It's right. so great. Right. It's so positive. How can we let him go? Seven point five million. Raiders. We signed three players. Oof. Yeah, we signed three scrubs. That, that don't say yeah, that. We didn't try to sign dude. scrubs. I don't like what you're doing. Scrubs. There, Jordan, no, you guys, you you're doing a bad thing right now, and you're being an ingrate right now. Do not call these players scrubs. That guy who was just on camera, perennial all star. He's not a perennial all star. He's never been to a Pro Bowl. What is perennial? He is. No, he hasn't. Does anyone know what perennial means? Perennial means you go frequently. Hmm. Do you know what it means, Marcos? I thought he went this year. No, not even a little bit. So a hundred tackles don't get you in, and 60, 63 tackles and nine. Yeah, it's it's not, it's a tough position. It's a to tough position to make. Uh, to to make the Pro Bowl, especially yeah. when Chris Jones plays the same position. Yeah, Aaron Donald, Chris Jones, Buckner from different uh, conference, jackass. <laughs> okay, you're aggressive, and I don't want to talk to you when you're this way. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I say something? Yeah. I would like to know how you guys feel about this because I'm going to open myself up mm-hmm. okay. for some criticism. Oh, I love this. Take it easy. So last night, you know how the little groups that your high school kids are in, they have these dinners where you go and you spend money and they get a cut. So – me, Mel, and Rebecca go to a restaurant. We sit at the table. Mm-hmm. The lady comes over and says, oh, we're going to have somebody clean that table. Somebody else is sitting there. So we wait like 20 minutes. 20 oh, minutes wow. to clean the table? Yeah. So I said, you know How what? dirty was this table? Wait, it, yeah. Like it was the last people that were sitting there, the food, the whatever. So I said, you know what? I'll clean it myself. I went to oh. the bar. Got a wet towel, cleaned it up, took the plates, brought them over to the bar, whatever, we're sitting down. She comes Mm. back over. What would you like? We order something to drink. Okay. 20 minutes, we get our drinks. We would like to order now because we realize this process is taking forever. Rebecca ordered tacos, steak tacos. Mm. I got calamari, right? (laughs) 20 more minutes. Now, we've been here for an hour now. Finally, we ask about the food. I'll go check on it. She comes back with the tacos. 15 more minutes. I asked the lady, how is it quicker to make steak tacos than it is to fry some calamari? Right? Good point. Good point. She goes, well, I'm by, I'm here by myself. So I said, it don't cost any less. Why would I care? Wow. Right? Leroy. That's, that's, not, that's not any of my concerns. Right? Yes. So yes. they bring the calamari. I said, could you uh Rebecca goes to get the check? Oh boy. Because we couldn't find the girl to get the check. She goes somewhere else, she gets the check. We pay the check. The manager says, I took the calamari off. Oh I said, That's solid. okay, fine. So here's what I did. The bill was $34. Wow. Jeez. I made it I made it 50. 
Okay. Mm-hmm. Even for the crabby service. Okay. Nah, that's good. Right, that's solid. But that came with comments. You mean you like you wrote on the receipt? And I wrote on the receipt. Oh, 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 (laughs) no, dude. Maybe next time this will get us some better customer service. Wow. So you gave her the tip for the next time for SAS. Like, no, because I know if I would have left zero tip, right? Yeah. That's some kind of stuff that go on Twitter and it goes without context. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. For sure. So I left a big tip. Yeah. Over 50. I left almost half of what the bill was. And I put that note on there. Oh, man. Derek Henry on the NFL Network. So, the purple my snow. question <laughs> is, is that being a Karen or would everybody be pissed off at that service? I don't think that's a Karen because you tipped her anyway. Yes, that's that's where you draw the line. No, I just put the tip. It. I did $16 so I could leave that note. Well, that's fine. It doesn't matter. She still <laughs> took that 16 But what, uh, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be pissed off? No, nah, I'd be pissed for sure. Right. The point is, you shouldn't order calamari. It's disgusting. No, it's not. Oh, you don't Calamari's like seafood. Good. You just you, have a baby palate. That's what it is, Argos. No, he doesn't. The, the dude just bragged about eating ice cream with sprinkles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and, and, future, and future ice cream and also. Dip, and dipping dots. Dipping dots. Good. Uh, all right. So Christian Wilkins made you sad. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can you, you make me happy? happy? New linebacker Jordan Brooks is here, though. Okay. Here you go. He's, he's, he's Fins up. To- Jordan Brooks here. Just got to Miami. Excited to join you guys. Can't wait to see you. Fins up. He said fins oh, up. Oh, I like it, that. No! Why? Why? It didn't have the same energy. No. It, it honestly did not. Did not. Uh, did not have it the made same me feel worse. Sorry. It, this oh, made me worse. Fins up. Jordan Brooks here. Just got to Miami. Excited to join you guys. Can't wait to see you. Fins up. It looks like he's angry at the humidity already. It is hot. I hot. Be <laughs> Wait, yeah. can I just say something? I'd like to take that back. Hmm? It's hard to yell at a guy that has a shirt that says "Seek Jesus" Seek on it. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to hell. I'm going to hell. It'd be great if that was the response on Leroy's next receipt. <laughs> That's what I'm Jesus. <laughs> are you gonna put that for the tip, or are you still gonna tip? <laughs> if you put seek Jesus as a tip, that's just wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Bring me some bread. I'll turn this into your tip. Here's a tip: seek Jesus. <laughs> okay. Like, right. Come on, man. Like, I, everybody says that I'm being everywhere I go. There's a problem, but I gotta tell you, I think all of my complaints have been warranted. Well, yeah, right? you always do. Yeah, I mean, no, that's a- and you wouldn't have been upset about that. I would have left if you told me it took twenty minutes for a table to get cleaned off. I'm out of there, dude. Yeah, I had to be there. Else. But it's the, the it's you. Not if it was with your kids and your kids are over there talking to their friends. Oh, that's right. It was a it was a it was a JR uh, OTC whatever the, the initials are. I just right? find it funny how you opened up everything with say very calmly, you know, right? Very very because mellow know, and cute. Because, and you're like, I just because I know here to you guys, and then you I come in with all does. of that. I know what this does. Right, and people act as if though I'm just supposed to let this person do whatever they want, but then complain about not getting a tip at the end. So I could have did it one of two ways, right? I could have just sat there and took it and then left a penny tip. Mm. How would you felt about that? Then everybody would have called me cheap. Penny, penny tip. You see what I'm saying? Rough. I'd rather do that for yourself. That's what she earned. Mm. So. Like, how do you want it? So I left a big tip, and I put my complaint on the receipt. I think I have gotten a seek Jesus as, as a tip before. <laughs> Someone gave me like a, a mini Bible. And I was like, thanks, dude. I'm going to go ahead and turn this into my landlord. So I don't know I don't know what people want you to do. Should you just, just accept whatever service you get? I'll tell you what like, I want. What, what do you do in that spot? Because that was really, that was terrible. That yeah, sounds bad. I'll tell you what I want right now, though. What, what do you want? This Derrick Henry was on TV with his purple oh, suit on. Oh, oh, oh. he had a purple suit. Oh, he did like have a purple, purple suit. suit. Yeah, but like a dark purple, like a dark not, purple, not like uh, like Lex Luthor. Oh. No, the Ravens are dark purple. What are you talking about? Lex Luthor was purple. Did That's he it. look like Jimmy Butler in his music no, video? Nah, Jimmy Butler had a light purple. Yeah, thanks a lot, Fallout Boy, for ruining him. Wow, Lex Luthor. Don't go ahead and blame Fallout Boy. Ever since that boy. video came out, 
Yep. He's been playing basketball like that country dance. He's you guys playing- just go ahead and look for anything to play. <laughs> He's been playing emo basketball ever since that stupid music video. I never liked it in the first place. Wow. Okay. That's bold. Really? He's it's an artsman, dude. It's so time. Oh, well, let me know. Maybe, yeah. maybe with daylight savings time, maybe it skipped a That's few games. That's right. That's true. I don't know. You, I mean, you're you're lashing out the wrong person. We know this is Camila Cabello's fault. Maybe. Maybe a little less music, a little more basketball. Mm. Little big so for now. He's not allowed to have friends. Not a lot of fun, but like if you're gonna have fun, get some free throws. That's true. <laughs> That's all I ask. Or make some yeah. shots. I really nice just, suit. I see I'm it. Just, I'm really just mad at Snarky Michael Malone. Is the Ravens purple? Still not over that. Huh? Yeah. It's just if you're Michael Malone, like, you know, oh, with, just have a little class. That's all I'm asking for, you know? You were fine when he was doing it to Celtics fans and Lakers fans. Nah. Yeah, you like, were. Yeah, you oh, were. That was, yeah, you were. No, that was like, that was very oh. in your face. This was worse because, like, he's going to take that L with you. And now he's trying to mock culture. Mm. What do you think you are, Michael Malone? He was oh, yeah. the game. Wow. Now that, I'm telling you, can I ask a question? Hmm? That's pretty quick to come up with that purple suit. Oh, he knew. Right? And I would hate to think that you already owned that purple suit. Where the, Me and that? you need to have some discussions there, Derrick Henry. Does he have Pretty a, sure he did not. What's in that treasure chest? Is that where the pen was? That's where all the money is. <laughs> God, they're going to be scary next year. Damn. Especially when here's – the, here's the kicker. How do you think they're going to – defend that offense when Lamar Jackson is in your lead rusher. <laughs> That's crazy. That's all you need to say. They released OBJ. They signed Derrick Henry and they're like, we don't really need receivers anymore. OBJ on the Chiefs. OBJ, he barely played. Okay, come on, the Chiefs keys. I think I'm on the Chiefs keys. I mean, he, he only played like 15, 20 plays a game. Who would you rather have, Craycraft or Odell Beckham Jr.? Who's going to give me more odds on the Hard Rock app? You don't have, wait, you don't have any money. Yeah, that's true. Let me see. Oh, yeah, you definitely. You can only afford River Craycraft. That's a replenish. Uh, quickly, uh, we, are, we already we already got a whole defense from the dollar store. Uh, quickly, an Inter Miami update brought just by Kettle One. Kettle One Vodka made the cocktail. The Brinks. Yes, the Brinks. On. Moving on, dude. See you. Did, they, did they win one nothing? It was a one one tie. Uh, no, they won. They won, won nothing. Yeah, I didn't. Messi I know Messi uh, assisted on a goal and he got hurt. And then he's probably going to be out for uh, their actual MLS game this weekend. So that's what Tata said. Want to hear the Messi goal? Yeah. Yeah. Right for Alba, back for Messi. Godoy on his back, bundles over the Argentine. Fans with a few whistles, none from the referee. Outlet stolen by Gomez, drives to the 18. Gomez, Messi, shot, go, go, go! That's how you get even, and that's how you get a two-goal lead. I love it. Two goal lead. I still don't know who this guy is, but I love his calls. Yeah, he's great. Goal, goal, goal. Very aggressive. Yeah. Isn't that isn't that soccer though? The 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 goal the when they announce goals, they are very aggressive. Yeah. Yeah. You had uh, goals yesterday from uh Suarez and Messi and Robert Taylor all lining up three one win for the Pinks. Easy peasy, dude. What did Dan say? We needed just like what a one one tie. Yeah, a one one tie. You, you got the road goals. Road goals mean more. Yeah. The hell are we? So this game. So that's uh they would have won on aggregate. Right. What? Um, yeah, because you you add the, the tiebreaker is um goals goals scored. Yep. Mm-hmm. So if they would have split, goals scored. If they were the tied. Away goals count for more than home goals, so it would have been two to one if it would have been, you know. Now, if it was three three, then the other team would advance more road goals. We'll uh, take a quick break. Back more after this. QAM.
right, <laughs> Tobin and Leroy here with you. This is what you're playing for middling NFL news that just came through? <laughs> oh, this is a big one. <laughs> this is a big one. All right. Well, if you say so. Yeah. Uh, Leroy. Hmm? Desmond Ritter oh. has been traded <gasps> to the Arizona Cardinals. What? Uh-oh. What does that mean for... Uh, I don't Murray? think it means anything. I think it means yeah, he's holding a clipboard for Kyler Murray. Yeah. One year, dude. One year they gave up on this guy. This is new Josh Rosen. They, I mean, they just gave a, a gazillion dollars to Kirk Cousins. Who know, you got know. his number from Kyle Pitts. Who's holding the clipboard in Atlanta now? Uh, I don't know. See? I don't know. Could have been Desmond Ritter. Who now? is holding the clipboard in Atlanta? It's a good question. Who will mm. hold that clipboard in Atlanta? Maybe they'll just uh maybe they'll draft a rookie, you know? Maybe Who knows? They'll sign Ryan Fitzpatrick. Desmond Ritter. <laughs> okay. We went and signed Kirk Cousins. Cause your play was not buzzing. Now you're in Arizona. <laughs> okay. It's always the last lyric. <laughs> we were doing that all break of Desmond Ritter to Desperado. That was Boom. good. That was good. Boom. Absolutely. Uh, Mobile, man. though. Let's not forget that. <laughs> <laughs> mobily terrible <laughs> mobile home is what he's going to be living in. <laughs> hey uh hey uh, hey it's zach sealer hey zach this is desmond ritter you got any advice on rvs to live in oh no i'm rich now oh you can live out there by uh uh out there with uh vacations cousin gardner meets you oh man yeah that's about yeah that's about it Man. What was the cousin's name? You know who I'm talking about. Vacations, cousin? vacation, Christmas vacation when they they had the RV in the desert, Sign or out. Vegas vacation, Vegas vacation. Oh yeah, what's that dude's name? Yeah, Clark's cousin. Um, Clark's cousin. Yeah. Well, his wife was it his wife's cousin? Was he cousin by marriage, or was that his actual cousin? I, th I think it was his actual cousin. Ah, uh, Clark's cousin. Nope. He was also the uh he was whatever that guy Randy Quaid. He was the guy Randy Quaid. Yeah. Randy Quaid. He played the uh Cousin Eddie. Cousin Eddie, yeah, and he played the despondent Cleveland Indians fan mm, in uh Major yeah. League. Wow thing! You <laughs> make my heart stay. No, no, no. He'll never do it. Here we go. <laughs> Too high. What does that even mean? Yeah, this is from uh nineteen eighty three. Oof. Which was the uh, cousin Eddie in National Lampoon's vacation? Isn't it Vegas vacation or was it just regular vacation? That just says vacation. You know who? You know who else was in that? That um, I think um, what's her name from um, Seinfeld was the neighbor in Christmas Vacation. Um, Ellen is it Ellen? No, not Ellen. Elaine. Um, Elaine. Yeah. Mm, I think you're right. And then you ever watch Everybody Loves Raymond? Yes. Yeah, sometimes. His, his mom was in Christmas Vacation. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They were yeah. good parents. <laughs> very they loving. Good parents. Annoying, but they were very, they were always there. Yeah, true. You know? It's easy when you live across the street. Hey, Leroy, can we get a uh, golf update from the. Uh, yeah, from the I've been following it. Home of the 90-day 100% satisfaction guarantee serving golfers around the country since 1968. Rory was in the lead at 8-under, but he double-bogeyed 16, I think. For anyone surprised. Uh, which is a par 5, which makes it even worse. Uh, now it's Xander Shoffley at 7-under. He's done for the day. Rory McIlroy is six, uh, second with Nick Taylor. Uh, Nick Taylor's on 16, on 17. And Rory McIlroy is on 18. Mm. Tom Hogue, Jason Day, Ludwig Aberg, ah, all Ludwig. at five under. Oons. Oons. Let's see who else we know. Oh, Nate Lash Potatoes is at four under. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Lashley. Oof. Uh, let's see. Start the show today. Let's see. Oh, my favorite. One of my favorites. Tommy Fleetwood shot 70. Eric Van Royen. 
two under. Let's see. How's our boy Gooch doing? I don't, Gooch is on live. Oh, so we'll see him at the uh, the the tournament down here? Yeah, because you know what they do. Here's what they do for live. I'd love to meet the Gooch, man. They not only have individual uh, – they not only have an individual prize pool, they have a team prize pool. Oh, I like that. So they play teams. So they, in fact, they trade and sign players like a franchise. So a, a couple of players got traded. And then if you don't play well enough, Liv kicks you out. Oh, wow. Yeah. What's that stupid look on your face? <laughs> I just can't get over it, dude. I really can't get over it. That's just so I, I just what? let it go. I just let it go. I didn't want to. What? I and I want to meet the Gooch man? Yeah, yeah. That's what's got you all rattled? I mean, he's a funny guy, great golfer. So, you know, just think How do we know him. he's funny? Oh, I've talked to him. I don't even know what the Gooch man looks like. <laughs> oh, God. I've never seen the Gooch. Is it what? Taylor Gooch. Taylor Gooch. You love him so much. Yeah. Let's just see what he looks like. Oh, okay. Taylor. Do you think he has an Instagram? I can imagine he doesn't look great. Taylor Gooch. Make sure you put Taylor. I don't think it's the same guy. It's very like important Instagram. that you put Taylor. Hmm. I wonder how he spells his name. Keep that off my Google um, Let me see. I got it. Is it it's... Taylor? Oh, he spells it yeah, with no Y. No yeah, y. no Y. Uh-huh. Oh, no T-A-L-O-R. Yeah. A wireless gooch. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> what a way to get us to a screeching halt. If there was a Y, it'd be Gucci. Oh, I can bring us back. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> Gucci main. Desmond Ritter. <laughs> the Cardinals traded you on a flyer. No, Tobin. But you're going to go back up, Kyler. So, so Tobin, you only got a 15-minute drive tomorrow, huh? Bro, is that what you interrupted the song for? Oh, yeah. Bro, Come on, I want to hear the rest of the lyrics. Aware of where I live? Yes, it's a very short drive. I can't wait for it. I'm really nervous, though, because I feel like I can see the look in your eye, and you're in a baseball fat shame and mood. Oh. And I'm not going to like He's oh, coming I, in hot. Like, just do me a favor. When you see Jake Berger and Josh Bell. Oh, no, but the first baseman, I don't fat shame first baseman. Only pitchers. That's they're it. normally they're listen. If you play a position, a that, portly comes position. With, that that is normally portly, I don't mess with you. First baseman, they first baseman because they can't run. We know this. <laughs> but if you're a pitcher and you can't get your hands over your head, so you have to pitch like this, yeah, I might say something. Take a break back after this. <laughs>
You call me all friendly, telling me how much you miss me. That's funny. I guess you've heard my songs. Well, I'm too busy for your business. All right, welcome back, everybody. Totally, Roy. Final segment of the show. Rory Birdie Day Team is now tied for the lead again. All right. Well, it is day one, you know, and it's not really a major, so it is Birdie and a bogey. It's like the fifth major. No, he double bogey. There's no such thing as like the fifth major. It's either yeah, a major. It or it's not a major. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Okay. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> okay. You don't like me dismissing golf, <laughs> dude. You dismissing golf is like me dismissing head kicks. <laughs> right. I like how you went back to that last week too. You're like, I don't yeah. understand it, John. They, it. they seem to. I listen. Here's what. Here's you have to understand the school of thought where I come from. Right. You watch film on somebody, and this is just football. You watch film on somebody. You get a, an idea of what their tendencies are, the looks that would lead them into those things, and you plan accordingly. Right. So I'm using that thought process to think, hey, here's a guy I'm getting ready to fight that's been kicking the crap out of people and knocking them out and head kicking them and stuff like that. Let me see how what he does and some of the things he does to set that up. By the way, uh, yesterday there was a lot of trash talk going back and forth between O'Malley and Cheeto still. still Cheeto, huh? Cheeto accused him of greasing. You know, what is the- that? Greasing is when you you la you, you it's what it sounds like you you put like uh some on your body so it kind of harder to grip. Not that Cheeto's going to go into a grappling match with him anyway, so I don't really. So know. Why is he complaining when? Because he hates him. He hates this. You know how usually in fights you have a big war, a couple fights. There's some respect. Not these two. They just don't like each other. And they don't want to like each other. So so they, they'll they, fight they, again at some point. Uh perhaps. I mean, I think Cheeto's got to win a bunch of fights because they're technically one one. They're technically one one, but uh, he used the I think term he grease to the bone. bone, grease to the bone. So, so the- my question is, 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 is Sean is better? Shane. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah Sugar Sean. He's better, Sugar, right? Sugar Sean. This it was a funny, it was a funny response from Sean. Uh, Cheeto Vera goes, who braided your hair, Sean O'Malley? You were greased to the bone. I wonder how much gel they used. And Sean O'Malley's response was simply. Send a pic of your face. <laughs> <laughs> Funny response. Yeah, the grease didn't necessarily uh, hinder or help the 230 significant strikes. <laughs> you know, there was also that. <laughs> there was also that. Cheeto responds. He says, I'm fine. Black eye, small cut, the usual. How's your liver? You do remember the sound you make. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it was a liver shot, but it, it was a good liver shot. shot at the end of the fight. It was. He needed a little more time, a little bit more time. If I was Sean. I'd say, how does my knee taste? Because, man, that was a. I can't believe that he took that. How in the world? And I didn't realize prior. I knew he was tough. Never been knocked down. Nope. That's impressive. I'll tell you what. I think it's only like him. Who's known for that? Max Holloway's never been knocked down. He might be in this next fight. Yeah, I was gonna say, fighting this Justin is, Gaethje. This is uh, UFC 300. The greatest night of fights ever assembled is what they're saying. Man. Really? Pretty good matchups, dude. I don't. I know you're scoffing at it because you don't have your poor precious Conor McGregor. <laughs> Are you guys gonna watch Conor in this Roadhouse? Yeah, I am actually. I want to see I how. Saw it, I, that's what that was. That was a real. I thought it was a commercial for. No, it's a real movie. It comes out next week on Amazon. Roadhouse. Okay. So it's uh, if you have Amazon Amazon Prime, which I think we all do. Uh, yeah, it's on. It's it's uh with Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. I, I think is he like a former fighter? Why is he always in fight movies? He doesn't seem like a con- a, a guy that that oozes badass. Oh, dude, what was the movie? Uh, Southpaw, right? That was the Southpaw. one he was. Yeah. yeah, that was a rough movie. Yeah, I mean, I think just act like how many times has Mark Wahlberg been a boxer? I feel like I'm well, dying. now he's in a dog movie. Yeah, I did see that actually. Which movie is Mark Wahlberg in? True story about uh, them doing like one of those uh, hundred mile tests as a group, and they find a dog. And true story. Arthur the King. Arthur the King. That's it. Yeah, never heard of it. Never heard of it. Hmm. But 
Mark Wahlberg. Is, it's not out yet. I think Mark Wahlberg is making the Karan Butler movie. Is he? Mm-hmm. Does Karan Butler have like a crazy story? I didn't even realize. Probably. Yeah. What? If they're making a movie out of it, it's probably interesting. Mm. If Mark Wahlberg is being a part of it. Karan Butler, like, you know, like went from, from jail at 14 into the NBA. Like the two grew, to, grew up mm. hard. So you're saying it's going to be a good movie then. Sounds like it's going to be a pretty good movie. Nice. Sounds like the tough good. juice. That's the name of it. They used to say Karan Butler when he was a kid, like Dwayne Wade said, like we thought we they were like legends of this man and because he sounded like a man, even though he was all like basically our age, oh. you know, because like they all run like, yeah. And then like to, to go from where he's gone two time NBA all star business mogul now, you know, assistant head coach. Yeah. Mark Wahlberg is like, I'm making a movie about that. What are the odds? So that, uh, Karan is the one that got Mark Wahlberg to produce it. And he hopes that Michael B. Jordan plays him. Ooh. Oh yeah, it doesn't even though he's a foot shorter. Yeah. It doesn't matter. They made him heavyweight champion of the world too. That's true. Which, by the way, I love how Michael B. Jordan, uh, Adonis Creed, just went up in weight classes. He's just right like, yeah. at the same size. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, we're gonna have. They're you. all heavyweights, and they weigh like a buck eighty. That's go, amazing. We're gonna have you at cruiserweight, but we're gonna have you fight Dragos. Uh, son. Hey, the 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 best part. Was Rocky fighting Thunderlips? Oh my is that, goodness! Is that Hulk Hogan? Yeah, the 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 real pictures, not the movie pictures. When yeah. you see real pictures of Sylvester Stallone standing next to that man, you go, man, television is amazing. Shmita Shmoli says Mark Wahlberg is a based on a true story floozy. He, he does, does love. A true he story. does do a lot of. He okay. loves a true story, dude. Oh, oh, okay, Smithen, he lost me at Ted. Wow! Well, yeah. <laughs> Not Ted Two. You didn't give Ted Two a chance. Mm. You know that's like the number one. There's a whole series yeah. now. Right? Really? It's so. Yeah. Awesome, I didn't know that. The it Fighter's was... a good movie. Huh? The Fighter. The fighter's, yeah. the fighters a good movie. Mickey Ward. Oh, but how many fighting movies does this guy have? Really? How many fighting movies does he have? Let's find out. Three hundred and sixty-seven. See, I told you it was a lot, dude. Mark you, you're, fighter. You've, you've been in a bad mood all day. And this one Christian Wilkins too. Wait, I, I would no. say if of everybody no. who came to the whoever everybody who came to the show, the person that should be in the worst mood is J Fig. Because where she was sitting. Guys, I, I really enjoyed my seats. Leave it alone, okay? Leave it alone. Okay, be wait, humble. Why are you crying? I'm not. It's not it's not like you're about to cry. He is crying. Is your, You've like, been crashing me this whole day about no, the seats. You I mean, it's ridiculous. Guess who gave me the seats? Who? This company. So uh, oh, <laughs> sounds wow. like uh, we got to get back to our Odyssey point scheme. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we. Hey, we so. We've if been we would have pulled all of our Odyssey points, you probably could have got sat two levels down. You got to get gotten three hundred. At least sat below. Or you the, have to be nefarious, right. like Marcos. Whoa. If I get if I get tickets to the game, I just want to sit below the uh, jerseys that are retired. Yeah, that's fair. Listen, I sat above those for the UFC. It was scary. No, I was with. Didn't I sit up there with you? When were you sitting? Yeah, when well, we had to eat, we eat food in the dark. Bro, they didn't even cater up there this time. Really? Oh. Yeah. Well, that's why I the know. gate was so big. On the <laughs> cheap skis, huh? They did go. Yeah. The Wait, I tell you what, Marcos. The last yeah. time we went. Yep. Nice food. Oh, dude, it was oh. like chicken cutlets. Oh, man. It not, was not just tenders. I was Ooh. like. Uh, I was like, hey, about a, how about a few mm. few less microphones in the press conference area? A few more chicken What'd cutlets up here and all up down. He okay. said nothing. Nothing this nothing? time. Wow. Crazy. I tell you what, when you go to Vegas, they put on a spread. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. All right, everybody. We hope you have a fantastic. We're going to be at spring training tomorrow. Leroy? Oh, uh, that's behavior, dude. Should I, should I leave at like 8 so I could get, you know, see him do the walkout? No, Leroy. Oh, I don't even think alone. they. I don't. I don't. I think they're starting actually, like in the middle of our show tomorrow. You don't have to do that. Okay. No, but I'm. How long will it take me to get up there? Hour. Uh-huh. I don't know, GPS. Dude. Are there going to yeah. be any trains? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> you know what? Minus one percent, and let's go ahead and end the show. I'm over. I'm over. Minus one. There's a couple, there's a couple of trains that might that what might just <laughs> cross <laughs> cross the Florida Turnpike. <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow from Jupiter. Desmond Ritter. And we're back, baby.
baby. The Cardinals traded you on a flyer. No. Tobin. But you're going to go back up, Kyler. I'd love to meet the Gooch, man. Hope you mother have a good day.